and we're live. We're on. This podcast is an alpha and may be subject to change. We we may be a lot I'm just falling asleep. A lot a lot more tired this podcast. It's gonna be it's gonna be a ride. It's gonna be a wild ride. I don't know if the internet's holding together. I'm not holding mm-hmm. together. Nope, Tef me neither. It's not holding together. It's it's gonna it's gonna be oof, not a lot holding together this week. I'll be honest, <laughs> but we'll get into that later. <laughs> oh. We're gonna bump episode for you tonight, lads and ladders. <laughs> but yeah, oh, shall we start with what we've been playing this week? Which uh, take it away, Tef. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think contrary to our usual. Um, Oh, I can't even make words tonight. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be a fun oh, one. It's gonna be a long one. I think you should go first because I, I, I've got a lot to talk about, and I think you've got next to nothing to talk about. So let's get you all the way. <laughs> Hi guys, I've been playing a little known game called Arcade Unchained. You may have heard of it, you may have not, but yeah, I've been playing a little bit of Arcade. We finally wrapped up the Garden Expansion videos. Woo! Got them out of the way <laughs> just before wow. the podcast. That one was... That thing's been out like four months now. <laughs> Listen, you know what? There was a boss fight that I just... You know what? I couldn't be bothered with. It's far too much work. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let's go and finally do it. And then did the boss fight. Ended up finding a way to cheese it. So that'll be in the video. Yeah, yeah. And help out all the kids that can't do it. Because the two low gear score. <laughs> and then after that, there's another boss fight that you don't really need gear score for because it's just like hey has god abilities now go fight this other god i was like cool well, yeah sounds that, good <laughs> that one was just like he gave you four abilities and just like yeah just time it so when he does this ability you do this ability and stuff so i was like okay easy peasy but yeah I uh I got, a, I got a costume because of it because you know that's garden of the gods um yeah that's all I've done. Yay. Hold on. Uh, wow. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. We played that. and then, Played a uh, lot of that. <laughs> we have played a lot of that. And then we got right to the end of the game. We were right there. And it crashed. I've but, never known that. I've never known that's a crash, you know, that, that capture card. <laughs> never seen it crash before in all my days. And I emulate a lot of games. Well, welcome to this potato of a PC down here. <laughs> yeah, um, that happened, but that very same night, don't you worry, I, I caught us right back up to where we were, so it's not a problem. Next Thursday, I'll come around, we can finish that up, and we'll move right on to Metal Gear 2. <laughs> oh, boy. Or whatever we want to move on to, but yeah, we'll we'll figure that out when Thursday comes around. Yeah, that's fine, we'll fly by the seats of our pants, as we often do. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Over the... Sweet. Other than that, there was one other thing I did play for like 15 minutes. I played Cyberpunk for 15 minutes, and I was like, <laughs> you know what? I can't handle 20 frames per second. I'm good. So, 20 frames? You're doing well <laughs> for your rig. You know what? I I was pleasantly surprised at how well it ran on my PC. <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly good. Yeah, surprisingly well. <laughs> well Alright, that's all I've played. Do you want to take it oh. away, Tef? Well, I've been I've been playing quite a lot of things, um, largely because yesterday I had a bit of a crisis, much like <laughs> much like Zan having this crisis as we speak. Okay, there, pal. <laughs> not okay. Bit of a, I'm not bit okay. Of spicy tea there, yeah. Or did you just fall asleep with the tea in your mouth? <laughs> Oh, I don't know what happened. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it's one of those. Oh, just just it's keep going. I'm muting myself on stream. You can talk. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> I can still hear him choking away, but that's fine. <laughs> so I had a bit of a a bit of an episode um, due due to uh, still not having a PS5 when it's not my. I tried, I tried, and I didn't get a PS5. So in in, in a, a bout of madness yesterday, I went out and bought an Xbox One X. Um, so I owned one of them now. Um, 
Very nice. Special a special edition, Project Scorpio edition, which I didn't even know. It was just handed to me. And the guy went, oh, that's a Project Scorpio edition. Is that all right? And I went, uh, okay, what's that? And he's like, it means it's day one. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. It just says Scorpio on the front. But yeah, it's cool. Um, mm. So I've, I've, I got that and I picked up Game Pass again because now I... Um, you know, I can use it for my PC and on the big big TV, and I just, I just, I kind of wanted one just because I, I've been playing so many Microsoft games recently, anyway. And to me, it's like so, it's so important to be able to just like jump between PC and and big TV because I like just like lounging on the couch sometimes. You know, it's just nice. Um, and sometimes I'm in the mood for that and prefer that, and I can potentially just pull this laptop over there and plug it in, but then I've, it's just a bit of a nightmare to set up it takes longer and you've got to hope that the wireless controller works because bluetooth with pcs is just awkward to pair and get set up i feel like every, you know i don't have a i don't have any controllers which is like specifically set up for my computer so i have to repair every time i want to use a controller with with, the, with my computer and it's just oh, why do that when i can just sit down and, and pick up a pad and go so so i've got a one x um christened it by playing Portal 2 to take take advantage of its uh, technological prowess. I just played Portal 4K. 2 in 4K. <laughs> in 4K. Which is, what else which did you play in 4K? Was, that was really pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Zan thinks this is really funny, but I also installed Oblivion on it and played that in 4K. I don't know whether it's funny just because I'm so tired. <laughs> just got to have those 4K potatoes. It's really important. Oh, it'd be a... Um, uh... I don't know, I'm just like 4K Oblivion, like, ooh, and see the, the pixels in uh, the adoring fan's eyes. <laughs> well, you won't be seeing any pixels, but that's, that's well, the point. Yeah, it looks quite horrendous, honestly. Any outdoors sections don't look great, because in the distance you can just see how they've put no effort into rendering the far distance at all. Mm. You couldn't see that before, it was like, you know, 720p on the 360, so yeah, it doesn't look great. But it's funny, and it's cool. It's the backwards oh, compatibility is just cool, anyway. Um, there's so many games I'm going to install on it just because I can. Fable Two, play that again. Why not? Oh, <laughs> I really want to play Fable Two again. I wish that I wish there was an easy way to play it again because that was a great, that was a good game. I had time, good, good times for Fable Two. Just going around, <laughs> getting the mansion, doing the demon door things. I think they were called demon doors. It was a good Do time, I, Fable yeah, Two. Good game. It's not quite as good now. I think it has aged, but it's still good. Um, it's just, yeah, when mm. I went back to it, it wasn't quite as magical as I remember, but that's, that's fair. It's, been, it's a very old game now. It's been a long time since Fable 2. It's still good fun. Um, uh, what else have I played on it? I got, I got the Game Pass, and the first thing I downloaded on Game Pass was this random game. Um, and I love this about Game Pass. It, it does introduce me to games that I wouldn't have played otherwise. Like, I, I played Hypnospace Outlaw on Game Pass, a few months back, and that just that was amazing, and I wouldn't have played that otherwise. Um, but l- last night, like randomly, I just I downloaded this game called Fox, uh, which is P H O G S, um, and I'd never heard of it before. And it's a typical kind of indie puzzle platformer, like three D puzzle platformer. Um, and you know the way they've always, these these like indie puzzle platformers have to have a gimmick, and the gimmick of this one is you play as a like a sausage dog, but both ends of the sausage are a dog's head, and Very you nice. control each you control each end with like like one half of the controller controls one end and one half controls the other, and you just move through the world like puzzle platforming with these two dogs, and it's got like um really like cutesy uh fall guy style aesthetic. You know, you know the type. Um, and I just picked it up because okay. I thought, like, I, I just I don't know. I just I picked it up because it wouldn't take long to download. And not gonna lie, my partner took one look at it and went, "We need to play that. That looks stupid and great." Uh, so I, I downloaded it, and it's 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 a lot better than I expected it to be. To be honest, it's actually quite creative. Um, the level designs are like really cool. There's um there's a whole world in it which is just arcade themed and um. There's this is like really creative uh, ideas for for arcade style levels. Like there's one where you basically play, uh, you know, Super Hang On, like the old arcade game, where like it was like a bike racing game, but you actually got on a bike. You know, one of those ones where like yeah. you're on the bike and you you move it side to side to steer, and you 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 just do that. You just grab the handlebars, each, one handlebar with each dog end, just to, they just 
grab the handlebars with their mouths, and then you just steer the bike and basically play a a, a bike racing game using the dogs. You know um, what? I, I'm sure I've got like an OC remix track of like Super Hang On somewhere. <laughs> you probably do some good music and Super Hang On. It's a Sega classic. Mm. But uh, yeah, loads of like cool ideas like that. Like there's one where you can get inside a pinball machine and you have to basically play pinball, but you can just cheese it because you can stretch the dog the dog so that it just goes like <laughs> um so you can just put the dog right across the middle of the uh, the pinball machine and just stop it from falling in. <laughs> um you can just absolutely cheese it and it's just really like creative ideas like that. It's just it's a really fun game that I just wouldn't have played at all. Um I ha- honestly hadn't even heard of it before. Um, cause, and it's it's on it's on Game Pass for Xbox. So there you go, pick that up. It was good fun. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else? Obviously played Halo and Forza in 4K. Obviously, um, which is pretty much the the same, but looks nicer. What? Not else to really say there. 4K the same, nicer. <laughs> that's, the same but looks nicer. That's it. It's the same but looks nicer. Good stuff. Good tagline. Uh, uh, <laughs> shut up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the the One X because it's like obviously not quite as powerful as the new consoles. Um, you have to choose between either having sixty frames per second or four K. So we're like kind of dependent on the game. I, I'm kind of like jumping between the two. It's nice to have sixty frames for some. But like the thing with, I think the thing about like Forza is I can already play at 60 frames per second on this computer, but I don't think this computer could handle it at 4K. Whereas somehow the Xbox plan is just to pull it off. So playing that in 4K, having a good time. Played some Forza with Ziff last night as well online. Um and that was that was just a good laugh because it's a mess online. <laughs> because you 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 start to rely on the rewind feature in Forza. Like you can if you mess up you can you can just rewind if you're playing single player and try again. And Flex sounds the time. Except just like Sons of Time, which we'll be talking about later, we <laughs> um, don't realize how like dangerously you drive in single player um, until that's taken away from you in multiplayer. Because you, you'll take risky corners, knowing that you can, if you, you know, you mess up, you can just try again and play it safer. So I just kept seeing Ziff just like spin out in the most majestic ways going into corners, and I did it a few times as well. And um, we played one race where we were in like 1930s Formula One cars that had no brakes and no grip. And we were like spinning out on every corner. And at one point I actually managed to get control of it. And I was going down this road at like 130 miles per hour, just blasting down there, catching up Ziff. And then I, I got around this bend. And just as I came around the bend, Ziff was just there in the middle of the road, side on, just cover, taking up the whole road, blocking the whole thing. And I just T-boned them. <laughs> a high nice. speed. It was good fun. Good fun. Um, so yeah, Forza. I love Forza. You might have noticed that I love Forza. You like Forza? I feel like Forza comes up every week, honestly. Along with Arcage. It, well, yeah, it basically is my Arcage at the minute. Um, mm. I noticed that the when when I when I loaded up on the Xbox, the Xbox has your game time on it, and I've already got um like thirty hours in it, which is not bad considering I didn't even have it for a few months when I didn't have Game Pass. Very sad, but now I own it, and um yeah, I play it like most days, at least one or two races. You really need you. You need a shot of adrenaline, pal. <laughs> I need anything. Let's just. Uh, I'm not used to being awake for this long. I can only usually stay awake for eight hours, and then and then I'm out again for a Sounds little while. I've been awake today since ten a.m. Oh, incredibly early. Far too early. I didn't even know me. you could wake up that early. I thought God stopped you from waking up that early. <laughs> we did have an arrangement, but uh, we aren't t- we aren't talking right now. <laughs> I can see why. I see that he's punishing you for something. No, uh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what it is. Mess up. Mess up. God hates you. Move on. Just but, uh... had a little bit of an argument, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think what else I've even played. I, I kind of blasted through everything there. Then I did also get Resi Three yesterday or the day before. I can't even remember now. I think it was the day before because uh, it's it was on sale for the end of year sale for fifteen pound, which I'd deemed when it when it first came out and everyone said it's super short. Um and 
gold, but not as good as two. I, in my mind, I was like, okay, that game sounds like it's worth £15 to me. I'll wait until it's £15. And then lo and behold, it was £15 a few days ago, so I picked it up. Um, and I've played about, I've, I've only played two hours of it, and it already feels like I've played half the game. <laughs> it's super short. Where are um, you up to then? Well, this is the thing. I'm up to a section that I, I might be wrong about this, because um, my memory of three isn't great. But I'm pretty sure this level doesn't exist in three. Um, and uh, it's it's see if I and even if I tell you where I am, it's not going to mean much to you because it's not as much of a direct remake as Resi Two was. Um, it's more of a reimagining. The whole layout of everything is different. You go through the story beats in a different order. Mm. Um, things happen which didn't happen in the original. As we know, things were cut out that did happen in the original like as well. The, uh... It's totally different. The fire, the firehouse is really early on in mm-hmm. that three, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the firehouse is pretty much the first thing you do. Which, to be fair, it is very early in the original game as well, but not quite that early. It's the first thing you do pretty much in um, the remake. Um, and then the power station is the next thing you do. Mm. Um, that's that's certainly not like the first thing you do in. In the original game, so you go to yeah, you go to the power station. So I've done the power station, but I've not done RPD yet. Um, yeah, yeah, like that's just not happened yet at all. Um, the the power station is totally different as well. I can I actually think it's really cool. Um, they've they've totally changed it, and it's 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 quite a good addition. Slight spoilers for kind of early on in this game, but um, when you go to the power station, it's infested with. Like T virus, uh, like spiders. You know, like there was T virus spiders in in Resi One and Two, uh, the mm-hmm. original Resi One and Twos. They don't they don't often use spiders anymore in the in the, the modern games, but they've they've brought them in for this one and they've changed them quite a lot. And they're absolutely horrible. So the way they're introduced is they sneak up behind Jill and they grab her and they just stick one of their legs right down her throat and like impregnate her with these tiny parasite bugs. Yep. And that's what they'll do any time they catch you. And that's it's introduced to you like that. And if you've got a green herb, um, you can have a green herb and there's some like in in game really stupid in game reason is given that like the, the green herbs act as a deterrent and it forces you to throw up and you throw up all the bugs. So um if you get parasites in you, you like you literally you can only walk really slowly and it slowly drains your health. But if you've got a green herb you can um throw up the bugs and this horrible animation of Jill throwing up. Mm. Um so you you have to go through this section and it's you're just working your way through all the scaffold typical like scaffolding of a substation except it's um all being covered in this sort of gooey spider web. So it's becoming really claustrophobic. Um and it's hard to spot the spiders in the, on all the goo and sometimes they'll burst out of the goo and sometimes they're on the ceiling so you've got to keep checking the walls on the ceiling. Um, and there's kind of just green herbs littered throughout the whole area because anytime big one of them catches you, then you're suddenly just walking really slowly and slowly dying because you've got these parasites. It's really cool. Um, I thought I think, they would have gave you like blue herbs or something for that. Yeah, I, I was thinking that blue herbs would make sense of that, wouldn't it? Because in all the other Resi games, the the spiders can poison you and you use yeah. blue herbs to cure it. But it, it is basically the same idea because they could always poison you. But I don't know, it's... It, it's really cool because they, they've just changed how it's done, haven't they? And made it, they've just made it grosser, you know, more body horror and given it a proper animation. And it's just better than the, the, the standard poison that's been in the game since, since literally since Resi 1, because those spiders were in Resi 1, poison mm-hmm. on you. So it's a nice twist on it. Um, I really like that section. Um, and then I've gone on to do a, uh, this is where I stopped, um, a sewer section. And I'm not going to lie, I stopped because it was just stupid. Um, you go you go down into these sewers, and obviously it's just like loads of narrow sewers, kind of like just like the sewer level in in Resi Two. I don't remember there being a sewer level in the original Resi Three at all. But there is this one now. Uh, um, there's you do fall down on the way to the tram, and then you have the uh, what are they called? The big worm guys. Oh right, that's right. That kind of ha- yeah. That's that a very happen. brief segment, but it is there because you've got to activate the switches. 
Yeah, so I think they might have expanded on that section because um, they have kind of cut some sections shorter and expanded on other ones. Um, that one seems to be longer, but they've, they've added in these really weird monsters, which I just couldn't take seriously because they're literally giant fish with with like legs walking down the sewer tunnels at you, and I couldn't take them seriously. They just look so stupid. They're just fish with legs. Um, they just, just. I need yeah. to see so images of this. Point. <laughs> I'll have to find one, but they're really, really dumb looking. Um, they're just like fish with really massive, muscly legs. Um, but I couldn't take them seriously, and I stopped there because um, I had an Xbox to mess with. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's how far I've got. And I'm, try I'm trying to think if there's any other set pieces that I've missed. Um, it, it opens slightly differently because it starts in Jill's um, apartment and she meets Nemesis differently because Nemesis literally bursts in through one of the walls yeah. into her apartment. She has to run out of the building. So that's how it starts, which is obviously totally different from the um from the original game. Then she goes on to um going into the warehouse where the guy locks himself in the in the lorry, which is, is where the original Resi 3 starts. So that part happens. I instantly recognized that room as I walked in, which was like a nice nostalgic feeling. I got that quite a lot of Resi 2 as well. Like as soon as I walked in, I was like, okay, I know where I am now. This is the, the room where it starts originally. Mm. Um but yeah, um it's the whole thing's out of order, so I don't know whether I can't tell yet whether things have been cut or whether they're just gonna happen later, because almost immediately you find Carlos and he takes you to the train, which that doesn't happen for quite some yeah. time in the in the original game. Um there's no, it doesn't seem to be any segment in uh, the diner. Uh, one of my favorite early game segments of Resi 3 is um, in the diner where you have to decide how to take on Nemesis, and there's a few ways you can do it. And you can like blow up the kitchen to take him out, um, or you can hide down in the basement. But doesn't that fill up um, with water? I'm trying to remember. It it does, um, depending on your choices. See, this is the thing, this is why I really like this section, yeah, um, because. There's a lot of different ways it can play out. I can't remember what causes that, but um, it can fill up with water, but it doesn't always. It depends on your choices. Um, I'm trying to remember There's loads of ways you can handle that situation. Yeah, that's, that's like that's... a restaurant you go in, isn't there? there it's like, and yeah, then, yeah. Uh, you can get like weapon parts if you beat the nemesis there as well to build uh, mm. the revolver, Magnum, Des Deagle, whatever it was, was in that game. I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, that, that's right. So that's one of the many mechanics that they've taken out. And this is, um, this it, 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 it's, it's a strange game. It's, whereas Resi 2 is kind of a direct remake that modernized the original game, this is more of a reimagining where they've taken the same basic idea, but it's not the same game at all. And a lot of the, a lot of the features that made Resi 3 stand out are gone. Um, one of the really cool things about, about Nemesis was that, um, he was like this unstoppable force, and the first time you played through, you you were gonna want to run from him as much as possible, and only deal with him when absolutely necessary. Um, but then when you replay and you're like more confident in dealing with him, um, you can take him on, and it's really hard. But if you do beat him, you get a uh, weapon upgrades for it, and that was a really cool mechanic that's gone now because there aren't really yeah. so far. There's no set piece fights with him. Um, there's the scripted moments where he will definitely show up. Um. Well, it's more, it's more, it's not, they're not fights. It's more when you're trying to get from point A to point B, he will be scripted he's to just Mr. get X, in your way. But faster. Yeah, he's, well, the, he's not even Mr. X, which I'll, I'll come on to. Um, he's kind of slightly dumbed down for Mr. X. Uh, but he's scripted to chase you through certain areas when you're getting from point A to point B, which is a thing in, in the original game. Um, mm. But he also shows up for scripted uh, fights, which doesn't really seem to happen in this game when he does show up for scripted encounters with you it's they, they tend to be too heavily scripted they tend to just be you running away in a crash bandicoot style thing or some sort of like quick time events or something like that it's so far it's um it's not seeming as dynamic um this might change by the way i am still early on in the game it it might not be like this all the way through this is just my first impressions um and they've they've completely taken out the choice mechanic which was the coolest thing that that game did, which no other Resi game has done, you had um, a lot of situations where Nemesis would appear and you would get a, a split second to make a decision. And depending on what you did, that would change different outcomes. It would change how you fight him. It would change how the encounter plays out, as we said earlier. Like the outside the PD and the restaurants. 
Does she have the choice yeah, to just yeah. leave or try and fight him and help her? Uh, is it Brad? Who's outside Brad, the PD? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brad Vickers, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he, he well, he's he's dead by the time you fight him. But uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. You have a choice. You, there you have a choice to fight him or run away, which if you fight mm. him, you get weapon parts. But then if there's other areas that expand on that, like the restaurant we were just talking about, where there's quite a few different ways you can handle that. And um, there's a lot of different outcomes and it can affect endings and stuff like that too. So that was a really cool mechanic that is completely gone. Um, and I am a little bit underwhelmed with Nemesis, honestly. I don't think he's as good as Mr. X and he's not as dynamic. Like they put a lot of, they put a lot of work into Mr. X and he feels like a real person. Like he feels like a real actual thinking like sentient being, if you know what I mean, like because he's persistent, isn't he? He's always there. People have um, no clipped to, sh to show that he doesn't actually ever despawn or teleport around the map. He always has a position and he's always walking mm. around. He never despawns. He never teleports. Um, when you can hear his footsteps, uh, like on the floor above you and things like that, he really is up there. The game keeps track of where he is. Um, that's not a thing at all <laughs> in 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 Nemesis. It, he can uh, teleport, in, in from what in, I understand. He, yeah, he just shows up in these scripted, um, these these scripted sections, as I said before. And I noticed at one point where I had to get from one building to another, I had to run through a series of streets to get to one point. Um, he caught me out and he killed me. So I did, I did it again, and I ran through, and I actually took a slightly different route. But I noticed he attacked me in the exact same way. So. Um, as I was running down this set of stairs, he always jumps over your head and slams down in front of you mm -hmm. so that you have to really turn and go down a another another route. Uh, like he always he always attacks you in the same way. like so so it gets to the point where you can predict it. and I'm sure when people are speed running, Resi, as a lot of people do, um you'll be able to know exactly where he's going to be at all times and just account for that and then never get hit by him. Um, so that's. That's 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 kind of annoying. You can tell this game was was put out in a year. It's it's fine, but you know they did have to make some mm. concessions. They didn't have as much time to work on it as they did with two. Um, I do know yeah. a lot. Of, a, a lot did get cut from the original. So mm. the whole uh, the whole clock tower segment is not in the game. Um, uh, I believe it as a boss fight. Uh, yeah, that, you are, you're, you you don't go inside it. You're outside it for the whole that's segment. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um. The whole garden, uh, or zoo, is it a zoo or a garden? Yeah, it's a garden, I think. Hmm. The whole garden segment isn't there. The hospital segment is is there, but they also have, like, they, they mess with it a bit. The, the, when you get to the hospital, that's, like, the end of the game, pretty much. Hmm. From what I understand. So, you don't have the whole garden, and then you end up in, you know, the underground. You don't have all that. I, I think it was garden. I'm trying to remember now. Remember you go through, you have like a boss battle. You go into like a shack and there's like a hidden room and you talk on a radio there or something and then you bump into uh, Sergei and then he's like, I'm actually the bad guy and see ya. And then, mm. you, and then you have a boss battle outside there where I think it was the giant worm thing again. I really can't remember now. It's been ages since I've played 3 properly. Um, I always play up to a certain point and then go, that'll do for me. Mm. Um, but... Uh... I'll, I'll definitely finish this one. I mean, it's super short anyway. I might as well. Um, and yeah. it is fine, uh, but it's a, it is it's it's a different beast from the, the Resi Two remake. I, I I couldn't believe how much ammo it gives me. Like at no point have I had less than like 150 bullets for my pistol, plus a whole bunch of gunpowder to make more. Like it's just it's really about the combat. Um, Which the original like, Resi Three was, but not to yeah, that extent. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. No, well, no. Um, no, it, it in that sense, I think it is a good remake because Resi Three was quite combat heavy. Um, no, I think that that actually does does recreate the vibe of Three quite well. To be fair to it, it does do it well. Um, and and they and they brought in the the dodge, dodge. button, which yeah, yeah it was it was a, was a thing in in the original Resi Three as well. It's the only game that has it. Um, that does mean that you've got all this ammo and you don't even need to use it. I, I feel like the dodge is kind of hard to pull off in the original game, but it's super easy now with modern movement and the fact that you know they don't control like tanks. It's really easy to dodge, especially mm. since it's it's not so much uh, it's not so much a dodge as it is just a full-on combat roll. <laughs> you she like 
if, if you hit it just right, she literally combat rolls out of the way, and then you're miles away from any danger. So there's not even really much of a reason to take on any zombies, because you can just roll past them. <laughs> so, Fair um, enough. Even Nemesis, you can roll past them. The only time he catches you out is, um, at least early on in his original form, is, is his big tentacle arm. He can just grab you. He can just, wait, wait, if you're really far away, but you're in historic line of sight, he can just grab you with a tentacle arm. And he basically pulls you down onto the floor. Um, and he, he doesn't hurt you. You just kind of lie there. You still have time to get up and run away. But that's annoying. That was fine in the original game. is because of the fixed camera angle. You could see Nemesis from far away coming up behind you mm. and you know, winding up that attack. And you could account for it. But now, since he's always going to be behind you when he pulls off that stunt, you don't know it's coming until he suddenly... Does he make floor. a sound or anything, maybe? Like a, any sort of telegraph for it? Not as far as I can tell. Um... But he's kind of hard to hear sometimes, honestly, um, mm. because when you because you find him in the city usually, so there's little burning buildings and hundreds of other zombies gra like moaning in the in the background. Um, if you're indoors with him, you can hear him quite well. But when you're outside, it's hard to hear him. So maybe there is that I'm not noticed, but that's been just kind of an it's yeah. been irritating me more than anything. It's not even a challenge because, like I said, he doesn't hear, hurt you when he does it. Um, it just slows you down. It's just irritating. I imagine you could get to the point where you kind of know when he's about to do it. Like, maybe get to a certain distance and you can, like, maybe hear him coming up and then you know he's going to do the tentacle thing, maybe. Yeah, but you'd have to keep track of where he is. That's my main, mm. my main um, complaint with Can you actually, system. like, turn the camera around and, like, keep running one direction while looking behind you or anything? No, not, no, no. you can't. Not in Resi. It's uh, fixed, isn't it? Fixed behind, over the shoulder. Um, mm. I just wasn't sure if they had actually, any in Resi for him. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, I might try that actually because that's not strictly true. In the in the new games, when you're sprinting, um, it's, it kind of switches off tank controls, doesn't it, and goes into normal motion. So, um, maybe you can. I'll try that. Hmm. Just an idea. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Resi Resi Three looked okay. It's like I think the Resi Two remake is probably still like the best Resident Evil they've put out now. Oh yeah, I, that's my favorite. That's my favorite of the whole series, by far. Yeah, which and, uh, says a lot. Huge, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I've been a fan since the first game, so that really does say something. Because I think, I think the Resi Two remake and then like the the first game for me is actually was my favorite before that. So. Yeah, me too. I think the remake of the first game was my favorite. Yeah, yeah, the remake it was the uh, what was it called? I think it was just like a HD remake. It's just, called it was, Remake. I think it was oh, just called it, HD re Remake or something, wasn't it? it? Well, it's officially just called Resident Evil. Because um, it, it wasn't even a HD remake originally. It was on the GameCube. And yeah, I know it was on. Than Opress, it? Yeah. But, um, fans just call it Remake. With a capital R. -A. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a, that, that's a good one. Yeah, what else? What else you been yeah. playing? Any else fun? Um, I mean, I've I've just like I said before, I've just been putting various Xbox 360 games into the Xbox One and playing them at 4K and going, oh, oh. <laughs> game that was never intended to be played at 4K and 4K. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It, I mean. It, I think I think I think it's think interesting it's cool, to look at. Honest. Yeah, and like I, and I mean Oblivion. I could already, to be fair, I I could play that at high resolutions, and I've played it before at higher resolutions than it's intended. Um, because you can do that on PC, but it's kind of yeah. nice to be able to just put it into a console and and it it just works. Because you know a lot of these old games, you'd spend an hour or two just tweaking it to get it to work on a modern computer before you can even play it. So it's it's nice to have that that console console style efficiency of being able to just slide the disc in and play it um i say that um you have to download the game because these xbox 360 games um the disc is just like a license check you put the disc in and it recognizes that you own the game and then starts downloading the whole game off the internet so you've got to download like six or seven gigs <laughs> it's just it's just mm. weird when it's all there on the disc but there you go fair enough uh... Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything like particularly interesting that I did with it, but not not really. I played Oblivion and um, <laughs> bit of Master Chief Collection earlier. Played um, 
Halo 2 anniversary. I, I put it to I, I really put it to the test actually because obviously Halo 2 anniversary is the um the most graphically intensive out of all the games on the Master Chief Collection with it being the latest game on there. Um and that plays at 4K as well and it does not just just doesn't really stay stable. <laughs> like sometimes it's like smooth 60 and it's fine. Um but anytime you get into a battle it, it kind of stutters quite a lot. Can't really handle mm. that too well. If I swap, swap over to the Halo 2 original graphics, it's uh, smooth as butter. And it's really funny because as soon as I hit that button to switch to Halo 2, I can hear the fans in the Xbox go, ah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's been like, I mean, uh, it, 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 it aims for 4K60 with MCC because they're mostly old mm. games. And I can imagine with everything else, it probably hits it. But yeah, with Halo 2 Anniversary, we're struggling a little bit. I will have to actually finish Halo 4 and then pick up Halo 5 as well because um, now I have access to that, having an Xbox. So I'll have to play yeah. that monstrosity for the banter and see how that goes. Well, I mean, good luck to you because, uh, you know, you know, take one for the team. <laughs> I will. Well, that's not how it is. Plays Master Chief, so... I think there's like apparently like three missions where you play as chief. So yeah, you you play as the new guy who's like doesn't like the chief. He wants to punch the chief. Chief bad. Uh, chief bad. No one likes Big John. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've got a wild ride ahead of me. I'll um probably have more games to talk about next week, really, because I'll keep messing around with the game pass. I'll definitely have more games to talk about next week because I've already got free indie games that look pretty good that i've got lined up that i want to play but uh mm-hmm. yeah i'm also supposed to be talking to a game developer tomorrow as well about their indie game doing Ooh. like a look at you yeah it's i don't know if i'd call it an interview to start something but it's just gonna be like a talk you know just like a private conversation about it so i'll get some insights into like you know in being an indie game dev and stuff which will be an interesting oh, that's conversation really cool. that's really yeah. really cool so. I mean, it was just a weird offer that came up out of nowhere, and it was like, hey, you know, potentially I could also have a character in the game. Potentially, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh, very, very cool. That is really cool. We should um have to talk about it on the, in the game nights. Talk about how it went and that. Yeah. Um, or some other time, whenever. You know. Yeah, this, this is still a really early in development game, so I'm just getting an idea of what it's all like to go through the development process. And, um... Yeah, I don't know when there's going to be a playable demo for the thing, but when I do get one of those, yeah. I'll be playing it in the game nights. Give it a go. Oh, cool. That sounds really interesting. You'll have to um, tell me more about that after it happens, because I am intrigued. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do. But yeah, other than that, I've not played anything else. I've been busy with other stuff on Arcage. <laughs> so before we wrap up this section, uh, should we talk about MGS? Because we did both play that, and we basically finished it so we, we did briefly mention on... it didn't we yeah yeah but i feel like since we've kind of mostly finished it we could good game we could talk about what we thought about it um especially because it's my first time nearly finish <laughs> um mm. and i i i did enjoy it enough for me to really want to play um two and three now i must say because it, it did it did pull me in and yeah. it's 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 really it's so wacky and weird but it's um it's it's this it's it's unique. That's the thing about it. It's it really pulls you in because there is nothing like it. Uh, the the weird sense of humor it's got, the creativity that it's got. Um, and how the system is not great, but maybe just a bit old. And like on top of that, it's also very political and very like philosophical as well. And I don't like politics in my video games, but mm. then you know. I realize I really like the Metal Gear series, and I also like The Witcher, and they're very politics heavy. It's got a lot going on in it. it, it there's so so much that Kojima's trying to get across in one story. I'm not surprised that it needed seven games in total, eight if you count Vengeance, and more if you count like. Oh. Mm. In fact, no. Uh, Peace, I didn't. I wasn't even counting a uh, Peace Walker. Like there's so many. There is a lot um, of games, but it's, in that series. it's yeah. It's a it's a big old convoluted story but i think that's because he had a lot he wanted to say to be fair um mm. i think it's safe to say there's no writer quite like kojima there he's he's got his own brand yeah he definitely does he uh i know he does really unique stuff and i think ever anything he puts out is like it's at least going to be interesting it's li- at least going to be like okay i want to i want to see where this goes 
So I I yeah. don't know. I do like the I do like the you know the goofiness, but also the the way he can, can switch very quickly between a very goofy tone to a very serious philosophical, like a political tone, and be like, let's talk about some deep stuff as well. Yeah, it definitely does have that. It it, it does have every tone that you can imagine in there, and it doesn't feel like it's mismatching. It kind of works somehow. Yeah, I don't um, feel like I'm getting whiplash when it happens. Yeah, <laughs> there isn't any tone of whiplash as weird as that is. Like, um, you know, the, we're talking about a game where within the space of a couple of, of, of hours, uh, you see someone have a heart attack in front of you, um, and and then suddenly you're staring, you're staring at everyone's asses trying to find the one who walks like a girl <laughs> to find your friend, and then you're back to walking down a blood-stained corridor with all these dead bodies, um, which is like that. That corridor is tense, like that feels very atmospheric, like it weighs heavy on you. Something about that corridor, but then when you get to the end of the corridor, it turns out it's a cyborg ninja who's killed them all, and he's weirdly masochistic and wants you to hurt him and it's just too weird and it does it jumps around it's just so like much. one of my japanese animes <laughs> yeah and then and then a random weeb wets himself it, <laughs> it shouldn't work it's kind of a lot like yakuza in that way it shouldn't work it's i think i don't know maybe it's just something about about japanese storytelling um but it somehow works when it feels like it shouldn't mm. it just comes together and i think when you said earlier, it, it does make you, it, make, it makes you want more. And that's yeah. like a really good way to put it. You, you always want to know what's next. Yeah. Got a good... I I think also like, to, like weirdly those games are like so on point when it comes to some poli- political stuff as well. Like it's like Kojima <laughs> predicted the future with a lot of these games. <laughs> like, I mean... Not gonna happen. Max okay. with nuclear warheads, yeah. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me, okay? It might be coming down the line. But, like, the end of, like, <laughs> Revengeance as well has some themes that are just very relevant to today. <laughs> and it's got so much weird stuff like that. And the end of 2 as well. The end of 2 is, like, very relevant to today as well. So, I mean, you'll see that eventually. I guess. I guess I will. Oh, that is uh, a another game that I want to try on the on the One X. Uh, is Bayonetta? Um, because Bayonetta's really good. I wish I was good at those types of games because Bayonetta is cool. Um, but I struggle with Bayonetta because I'm not good at those those kind of games. Mm. But um, it apparently runs very nicely on the One X, so I should give it a go. Um, because it it's not in, it's not enhanced in any way. Um, it's just that on the the Xbox 360, where I've always played it previously. Does it run a 30? It quite. It, it, no, it, it aims for 60. Okay. It's, it's a platinum game, isn't it? Um, Bayonetta. Yeah, I mean, there, are, yeah. there have been some games. I, I'm sure they've had like some games like that where it's run a 30. Or like oh, games okay. like that, if the, if they run a 30, they don't. They just don't feel as good. Yeah, I was gonna say like yeah, I don't even know why we did bother with that type of game. It does. It does on the 360. It aims for 60 frames per second, but doesn't. Always stay Achieve, at it. Yeah. it. Drops, yeah, it drops quite a lot in you know in more intensive fights, and it's kind of locked at sixty with the extra power of the Xbox One. So it would be nice to just to play that just for the smoothness of it. Mm. I think it's still like seven twenty p though, so maybe better off just getting it on the Switch, which is weird to think it'll probably have have a higher resolution on the Switch than it does on the Xbox One. Yeah, I mean it is gonna have Bayonetta three and two on there as well, so. Mm. I need to play Bayonetta too. I don't know. Bayonetta's just oh, such. A, it, I had such fun playing Bayonetta. It was such a good time. But I'm also really into those games. Like I love Metal Gear Rise and Devil May Cry and Bayonetta. They're right up my alley. I would not want to play one of those games on Joy Cons, though. Honestly. No. Yeah, I'd want to get like the yeah. Pro Controller if it was going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't think that the, the Joy Cons would lend themselves to that. Those Wouldn't kind of do games. it justice. Hmm. So, um, should we take a break? We've got a lot to talk about in the second we, segment. Actually, we've got loads to talk about. We do have quite a bit to talk about. So, you know, we'll go ahead. We'll take a quick 10 minute break. I'm going to go get another cup of tea and just like try and try and refuel, try and, you know, keep my energy level up because, oh, oh, it's, it's hitting me. I'm not going to lie. I think you need it, pal. I do think you need it. 
But yeah, we'll be right back and then we'll get into all the fun news that we got this week. So don't go anywhere and we'll be right back. All right, and we're back and apparently we were in the arcade category for the past oh. hour. This has been such a mess. Oh, uh, we've got so the announcements out. Well, um, I I wrote out the announcement. I just never hit enter on it. Apparently, I'm too I tired. Managed, <laughs> I somehow managed to switch off my own router during that break, and I had to wait for my internet to come back on. <laughs> and I, I I was just sitting there with my guitar, just like I don't know where he's went. <laughs> I, I, I come back and. Zant's just turned into the stereotype and he sat on his bed with like one leg up on the bed playing guitar playing the smash theme of all things well i mean what else do you want me what do you how else do you want me to play the guitar i'm playing an acoustic guitar where else am i gonna put it you just like <laughs> i just you know i was trying to keep myself awake with that or i just drift off mid podcast and then we stay on the break screen for the next eight hours and people wonder where i've gone <laughs> you it feels like you're drifting off tef where's he going i, I fucking hell, nearly actually fell over them uh, anyway, let's just do the news let's get this over with i want to oh, die you, you, sh you should have fell over it would have been the highlight of the podcast honestly <laughs> 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 it's funny when I hurt myself trapped over here. <laughs> uh, I'm so tired. <laughs> okay, what, what are we, gaming news? Gaming news. Let's gaming get news. back. To, oh. Let's get back to the actual podcast after that extended break. But yeah, we're back. It's news time. So there's been quite a bit this week, mostly Cyberpunk and the Game Awards, but there's been a couple other things that we can talk about as well because. Capcom has had more information leak again. I think it was was it November where we covered the big hack on Capcom? Oh, that's right, yeah. Because that's when they um like the release day for um Village got announced or well leaked I should say. So that got leaked back then, and now more details about Village. Apparently, like spoilery stuff has been leaked as well. So yeah, you gotta be careful. The whole ending apparently. Yeah, so we're gonna be careful on the internet now. If you're uh, really looking forward to the story of Village, which I kind of am, because I really like the Resident Evil games, and you know, I kind of want to see what they do with Eight. Yeah, <laughs> I'm interested. Yeah, I wouldn't want it. So no spoilers on this channel, please. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, Capcom needs to sort out their security clearly. Yeah, I mean. They've been doing good with games, but they've really dropped the ball when it comes to uh, security, apparently. This whole year, there's just leaks all around. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. This one's just an interesting one. Be aware. This is happening. Oh, but, yeah. Um, also, in other news, we have EA versus Take-Two, who've been in a bitten war for... Uh, Codemasters, which I'm sure we covered some of this on Codemasters a while back as well. Did we not? We covered something on Codemasters not long ago, I feel like. Yeah, I think we did, but I can't remember what it was. Probably because I'm slowly dying. I, th I think it was Take-Two um, trying to acquire them. I think we were... Yeah, so they, they have been trying to acquire them. That is, that's part of this news story. Um, mm. They've been trying to acquire them, and EA has slid in with a higher bid. Yeah. <laughs> Quite, oh. quite a significantly higher bid. Seven hundred twenty-five million pounds, or nine hundred sixty million dollars for you Yankee Doodles. Uh, mm. no, more money than I will ever have. <laughs> oh yes, more money than you'll ever accrue in your whole life. Like yeah, all of it, including the stuff you've spent. So yeah, they really want. Unless I start masters. chilling on Twitch, you know. <laughs> Get those titties out. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is a this is a big one because I mean, honestly, if you like Codemasters and what they do, it's not gonna go You're well right. either way for you. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's time They've, to take um, two or EA. <laughs> Pick your poison. Yeah, they are screwed either way, and it's a shame because they're like they're basically like the kings of um, racing games. I mean, they they do uh, the F1 series, the Grid series, and the Dirt series. Mm. Um, and 
yeah, like that's the, some of the biggest um, names in the racing game scene. So I would be concerned. Um, I've, I've got to agree with our boy Ziff. Um, he said that EA is actually a slightly better option than Take Two, and he's definitely right there. Um, Take Two would, would definitely be a fate worse than death. EA it will, you know, the games will probably still be fine under EA. They'll just be uh, microtransaction to death, but they'll probably still be pretty good as games, whereas with Take-Two, I don't trust Take-Two to actually make sure that they continue to be good games. So, um, uh. Yeah, Take-Two have done some uh, some quite egregious things with recent games, uh. which we, we have even covered as well. I feel like it wasn't that long ago we were talking about the ads and stuff. Yeah, that's right. That was only, well, I'd say last month. Yeah. Yeah, they've been pulling some bad stunts, to say the least. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I don't know. Again, I don't really, I'm not super invested in Codemasters. I don't really play anything that they do. I know this is more like, like, it, it, Ziff, Ziff would probably be very upset with this. He could probably yeah, speak he more is, on it. well, he, 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 he was talking about it quite a lot today in, um, in our, in our little podcast group chat. It's actually pal, if you, if you read our group chat, but, uh, well, he's not talking about on a podcast, is he? He's not here. He's not here on a podcast to talk about it, so I guess I'll talk about it for him. Um, he said he said he thinks that they're they're mostly aiming for the F1 IP. Um, apparently, that's the most popular one. That's the one that makes the most money, and it's um, the last few entries have really improved. So it looks like it's just gonna it's just gonna get better and better. It's going from strength to strength. So um, that's apparently the one that they really want. Um, but obviously, Grid and Dirt are pretty big IPs as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's not too happy about it. Um, yeah, me and you, I don't think can talk about it um, too much, really, because I'm not really into racing simulators. I'm more into the arcade style, and you're not really into racing games at all, so... No, not really. Uh, we're not qualified for this, but, uh, yeah, I can see I can see why people would be concerned, certainly. Hmm. But, yeah, it's an interesting one, and uh, we'll see how that turns out, because this has been something that's been going on for a little while now. We thought it would be Take Two, but now EA is just like commanding away. Who knows? Maybe Activision Blizzard somehow step in and go. You know what? We want a racing game. <laughs> <laughs> well, Microsoft they're snapping everyone up these days. Uh, you know what? I feel like Microsoft will eventually just buy all the big publishers and be like, "You all belong to us now." <laughs> mm-hmm. You know that's another really cool thing about uh, Game Pass. Uh, you know because they bought Bethesda, um, Doom Eternal is on Game Pass already. It's only been out a few months. <laughs> That's good. Because it's now te- it's technically first party now, isn't it? And all first party Microsoft games go on Game Pass as soon as they're released. So I'll have to play Doom Eternal, I guess. Good game. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I mean, that one was a nominee for Game of the Year. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Amongst many other things. I feel uh, like I feel like Doom could never get Game of the Year. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah. yeah. We've got a lot to cover on the Game of the Year stuff. True. We do. Uh, yeah. Should we smaller stories first before then, though. Should we talk about Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo all banding together for good causes? Yes, for safety a... in online yeah. gaming. Yeah, this is a weird one, isn't it? So they've kind of agreed that they're going to partner on a commitment to safer gaming. Um, I'm not clear on what this is i don't think they've really explained what it actually means um Mm. let's see so it was announced on uh it was xbox who announced it with the um corporate vice president of xbox operations uh discussing how he and the team believe that gaming is for people of all ages including the youngest and most vulnerable players okay so i guess it's about protecting kids online because there's a lot of vitriol you know out there on, on the internet especially with gaming um, if, if you're playing card or something like that then you're definitely going to come across it so yeah I guess it's to do with that i don't know what they're actually going to do it just feels like um, the same a lot of stuff yeah that's it it's all words so far they've not actually even outlined what what they're going to do so uh, it's just investing in technology is is the best that we're getting mm. um informing parents and players through our codes of conduct good luck with that people would have to read them first which they won't yeah no one ever no one ever reads any of that stuff yeah i mean it's 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 nice i guess um it's a nice sentiment but whether they 
actually go through on any of this and or actually put anything in places yet to be seen. Um, it might just be, you know, a bit of a bit of corporate goodwill to make your company look better. We will have to see, really. Um, wow, there's just bullet points to one bullet points, and nothing is actually said. Uh, we're wow. going to work with the industry. We're yeah. going to work with ratings boards. Well, okay. Um, we're going to comply with local laws. I, I, you, I, you should be doing that anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's prevention, partnership, and a responsibility, or PPR. Or PR. Yeah. Just a lot of PR. Lot extra of extra PR. PR on that PR. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a lot of... We're going to do all these things... And, uh, which, you know, probably should be doing anyway. But yeah, we're going to do all these things and make a bright future for gaming. Mm. Sure thing. We'll, I'll wait until any of this actually happens before I pass any judgments. But yeah, it's so far, it's a lot of words and not actually said. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if anything actually comes of it, which I feel like it won't. It feels like one of those... We've gotten a committee together, guys. Look what we're doing. Aren't we doing stuff for the community? Oh. Had a little bit of a, a drop there. for a second there. Yeah. And the internet's not been holding up well tonight, which is unfortunate, but hopefully, you know, it holds together. <laughs> it's as messy as this podcast today. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's a messy podcast. What can I say? There's not much we can really do about it. <laughs> but yeah, uh... That's all there really is to say on that. Safe for gaming. They're going to commit to it, guys. Don't you worry. Yay. You will be safe playing your video games. Should we talk about our most hyped remake that's coming out that we can't <laughs> wait for, that we've ragged on this podcast in the past? Uh, you know Prince what? I wish, I wish I had the sons of time so I could go back and stop this game ever existing. Oh, man. I feel you there. I feel you there, pal. It's just going to be a mess. So, uh, yeah, so it's been delayed. Um, to be fair, this no may surprise. well just be because of COVID. Um, I think that's been the trouble with yeah. most games this year, to be honest, because we've had so Absolutely. many delays. And then games yeah, that yeah, have come definitely. out have just not <laughs> met expectations for the most part. <laughs> yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, this has already actually been delayed once. Um, it got delayed to January 2021, but now I think they've realized they're not going to hit that target, so they've pushed mm. it back to March. March 18th. Um, I think it's good. I think more time on this game, the better. Um, cause I think it definitely the, needed it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I've got a feeling it's probably going to play fine, but the visuals need, need some touching up before it ships out, I think. So hopefully yeah. a few extra months, they can um, make the character models look a bit less... PS2 e. I get the feeling it's not gonna change that much visually. I feel like there'll be very oh, minor not. changes. Yeah, I'm being hopeful. What can I say? A man can dream, son. A man can dream. Yeah, you see, we, <laughs> we have this opposite thing where for some reason you're hopeful about Ubisoft, and when it comes to CD Projekt, I'm hopeful that they can fix a few bugs in a few months. <laughs> you're like, yeah, they can. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> You've got a much more negative viewpoints of Ubisoft than I do. That's that's true. Uh, it's funny how we're like that. We've got very different. I, f I feel like with certain publishers we we agree, um, but with other ones we like we disagree, which is which is interesting. Uh, well, hopefully it is. Otherwise, we're still complaining this podcast. I mean, we've got to disagree <laughs> about something. Otherwise, you know, it just feels people like yeah, yeah, this is bad. I agree. Yep, yep, yep. I can, I can go. Oh, I know, mm, I indeed. I, I do. I do. <laughs> that this is going to be a crap remake either way i can't see them fixing it in time i'm just i am just being hopeful because i don't want them to mess up this game this is a, a great game and they've it's got a really chance to game. reintroduce it to the zoomers um but maybe it maybe it won't be worth picking up and that'll be a damn shame listen uh i don't know i feel like zoomers probably wouldn't even get it they'd be like "Ooh." i mean it's actually you know what world. Where are the collectibles? <laughs> you know what? Prince of Persia was actually pretty forgiven for the time, now that I think back. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah there was not really any punishment for death, really, mm. from what I remember. But yeah, it's a uh, little... Sorry. Go on, uh, no, what were you going to say? I was just thinking that even then when you died, it was um, most of the time you could just rewind your own death unless you were out of sand, so... Mm. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a particularly difficult game except like 
like towards the very end where they're like, now we're going to take the sands away from you and actually make it difficult for this last segment. Use everything you know, which was really cool. I like that segment of the game. I, mean, I think that was a thing a lot of games did back then. They'd give you a bunch of stuff and then take it all away at the end and be like, now use the fundamentals that you've learned throughout. Yeah, I think that's a very smart game mechanic. If you do that right, um, mm. that can be really satisfying. I think Prince of Persia, Sons of Time definitely did that right as well. Mm. That was a very, very focused game all around. I feel like mm. no time is wasted when you're playing that game. Every set piece is so well designed and thought out. It's just, just a quality game. Absolutely yeah. classic. A little bit underrated these days, I think, honestly. You think it's underrated? Or do you uh, just think it's like we just don't know many people our age <laughs> that are like, yeah, Sands of Time, great game. We're just used to Zoom as no, being like, being like, that's... You speak for yourself, pal. You speak for yourself. I've been on Twitch I too long. Hang, I hang around on a, on a lot of, like, retro gaming um, communities because that's that I'm into, all that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, like, uh, Sands of Time, people go like, yeah, it was good, but I don't really think people appreciate it as much as they should. So it's just a really well-made game. I think it's because it doesn't stand out as it's you know it's not mind-blowing or anything like that. But I think people should appreciate it a little bit more than they do because it was really well put together, and it basically it's it's essentially the the precursor to Assassin's Creed. So it deserves more attention for that alone. Mm. Well, I think it's more enjoyable game than Assassin's Creed, in my opinion. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but that's, you know how I feel about Assassin's Creed. I don't know. Ah. I feel I found Assassin's Creed kind of dull, but that's just me. At least yeah. one was. Yeah, one was one was kind of dull. I mean, you, you can't you can't compare the first game. You can't you can't play the first game and say like you understand Assassin's Creed. The first game. I mean, was... I played one, two, and three, and one, and three were kind of dull. Well, uh, the funny thing about Assassin's Creed is um, every other game is good, and then the ones in between are just kind of okay. Uh, it's a funny thing about that game. I don't know. Mm. But, uh, should we start talking about Cyberpunk? We've got a lot of Cyberpunk to get through. Uh, Cyberpunk's gonna. Cyberpunk's gonna take a while. So <laughs> I think it's gonna divide us greatly here, too. Gonna be some. Anger if if we have the strength to muster uh, What's divided we fall? What's what's the phrase? Oh I don't know. divided you we know. fall down and sleep. Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm down to sleep. Let's go. Let's go. So yeah, Cyberpunk is the biggest PC launch in history. Yes. Just just beaten out while Shadowlands, which was surprisingly the biggest right before it was very quickly stolen off it. <laughs> I'm surprised that was... Um, yeah, I, I was surprised by that as well. That's, a, that's, a, that's bizarre. But yes, it's been a hell of a roller coaster with the Cyberpunk release, hasn't it? It's been ups and downs uh, across the board. Like, yeah, it's um, it has done... It, it did really well. Um, they say that... It made a profit in a day. The cost. Yeah, yeah. They've apparently recouped the cost, which when you consider that it's an eight-year development cycle is insane. Yeah. Um, to the mm. point where I'm not entirely sure if I believe that, but I will have to look into that more. Um, but if they have I, recouped the costs for eight whole years, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I do believe there's a there was a whole like like financial plan that was out there somewhere that showed like all their spending costs, all their expenses, mm. and half of it was on the market, and the other half was on the game development, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because the marketing has been going throughout the development cycle as well, when you think about it. Um, mm, it was so, very brief early on. Like, for the first, like, four years, there was very little marketing, I'd say. That's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, you are right there. Um, yeah, it's um, it's done insanely well. Um, although, mm. whether they might lose a bit of that, because I know there's a lot of refunds going on, because the game doesn't really run yet. It's blatantly not finished yet. Um, they've had obviously had to just put it out. Um, I think someone higher up has just gone, look, we need to get this out the door. It's been eight years. I mean, years the stocks it. did go it's down when they announced uh, when they announced it was getting delayed again. The stocks went down. So I mm. think after that, it was like, we can't really let it go any further down. We do need to put this out. And I think yeah, that's probably why. And they came out and they have gave like an apology, which apparently some people 
are upset about but how it how it read to me i'll i'll say how it, i read it for the first time let me actually pull up so i can read it right now but their apology essentially said that my face is probably going to be very yellow now because it's a very yellow apology i don't know if you guys can see that super yellow apology um so yeah, I've, I've like moved off to the side now yeah. but yeah essentially said they're gonna fix all the bugs and this is so patch one will be in january followed by patch two in february and together they should fix all the prominent problems that people are having with the games and they've said it won't make the last gen look like it's running on a high spec pc but it'll be a little closer to the experience which to me sounds like okay by february the game is probably going to be done so they probably just needed a few more months but this got pushed out and I think that's probably it is probably down to 2020 just being a mess of a year and then them forced being forced to push it out which is probably a problem of them promising it in 2020 but um other than that they also say you can then also refund it and you can contact them to help get a refund if you know it's you're not getting one quick enough but you could use the playstation or xbox system or you know steam but all of these Admittedly, all these places have their own refund policies anyway, and they've always have. So, like for me, I picked it up because I knew I could just refund it if it didn't work. So I just checked it out and was like, okay, it doesn't work, refund. Which They, they all um, had special agreements for Cyberpunk as well, where you'd be able to refund basically no questions asked because they were aware that Cyberpunk... Um, just wasn't running properly uh, for most people. So um, Wait, did they have the special um, agreements? Like I feel like so, it's uh, just normal. Is that not normal? So um, with Steam, you can, I think is it two hours the limit? Um, if you play yeah. more than two hours, you can't refund it. So with Steam, um, well, I mean, according to the internet, um, a lot a lot of people have been saying that if you just contact Steam um, and say that it's Cyberpunk, then they'll manually just go, okay, yeah, fine, and they'll put the refund through because they know that it's Cyberpunk and they know that some people are spending two or three hours just trying to get it to run, or they might get two hours in or mm. three hours in and then hit a point where it starts crashing a lot and things like that. I think so they're, they're to do that. Um, you can always obviously speak to someone and hope for the best, but I'm hearing that with Cyberpunk, a lot of Oh, and those Steam. I Sony tend to, I tend to hear this with every new release. When you talk to someone, you can usually just be like, "Listen, this game isn't working." And usually, they give it back to you. Typically, I don't know. Not with Steam. Uh, usually, certainly not with Sony. Certainly, I feel not like with I've Sony. Sony, Sony really don't like giving out refunds at all. Actually, so the fact that Sony are doing it says something. Um, I mean, they have to legally do it though. They have to legally have that refund policy in there. Just, just like it ha they have to have that. So. Um, I'm sure they do because I don't think Sony have a refund policy for most games. Uh, uh, we can know. Google it right now, but I'm fairly sure. Place, uh, PlayStation refund policy because I'm sure all of all of the big companies legally have to have this. Uh, yeah, so, so they can request one after purchasing. A, after purchasing, you have 14 days to request a refund. Yeah. Okay. Whether so, yeah. they'll actually give you one is a different matter, but yeah, yeah, fair enough. I just, I've just always heard that they're they're, they're kind of tougher on that than most companies. I've never it might just be their support's awful, <laughs> which it's, who knows? It's possible, certainly. But uh, yeah, what was our original point with that? Uh, um, we were talking about the apology, and I just wanted hmm. to give my perspective on how I read it. So to me, it reads like because they're actually saying refund the game, which I don't think most publishers would come out and say if they had a bad game or the game wasn't running perfectly on launch they'd be like you know but we're working on fixes guys bear with us but they're just like refund it and here's a time scale for when the game will be ready again where you can pick it up again if you really want to and that's how i read it yeah so i'm seeing a lot of um a lot of, like criticism of this apology online there's a lot of it actually um, everywhere i go i'm seeing it at the minute and it's it's not really to do with the refund section some people have said that that some people have said that that comes across as basically free pr because um it's not them who've set up these refund policies it's the other it's all the vendors had already done that and now they're just saying oh we'll get a refund you can you can get a refund with these people and they won't They'll do it, no questions asked, but that was already the case. It's not that CDPR uh, put that in place. 
some people have criticised that, but that's not really the point of the main criticisms anyway. Um, people are taking issue with the um, with the opening lines. So it says, we'd like to apologise for you for not showing the game on base last gen consoles before it premiered and in consequence not allowing you to make a more informed decision. We should have paid more in, more attention to making it play better on PS4 and Xbox One. Um, that's annoying people on for two two reasons really from what I've seen um from what I've read on with Twitter and Reddit it's that we should have paid more attention to making it play better on PS4 and Xbox One it's that line in particular that really bothers people and I think that's because um it implies that the PS4 and Xbox One wasn't the focus um and people are reading that as meaning that the next gen consoles were the focus um that wouldn't surprise me and I, but the thing is hey, the thing that you've got to remember, though, is that this isn't a next-gen game. Um, it's easy to think that it is because it looks very nice and it, it, it struggles to run on anything, but that's probably just because it's un unoptimized. But this isn't a next-gen game. If this had come out when it was meant to this year, before it got delayed multiple times, it would have come out before the, the next-gen consoles were even out. Um, this was not meant to be a next-gen game. In fact, it was announced at the start of this generation, like eight years ago. Um, to say that they're not focusing on the PS4 and Xbox One, it's, it's, people are seeing that as disingenuous. Um, especially since, and this is the second point, the other reason why people have a problem with that line. Um, it, especially since they obviously knew that it was running really badly and they pulled a lot of stunts to make sure that people didn't know how badly it ran on, on the old systems. And this is where people are... Um, really sort of i'm getting i'm getting a lot of people who, who were called to see the pr out as as this sort of um evil <laughs> evil publisher type company over it um because um you can sort of see this conceited effort to hide how bad it was they obviously knew so first of all you've got the ceo a few um months ago saying oh on the xbox one and the ps4 it runs surprisingly well actually uh yeah it's fine um which obviously wasn't true and now he's being called out for that um well i i the... imagine it right run surprisingly better than he thought it would <laughs> that was yeah, what we... just how you can how you can read it now yeah but at the time people thought well he's trying to say that it runs better than better than you would expect so at the time if you say that because don't forget people are expecting it to at least run uh like 1080p 30 frames per second mm. fairly stable when he says that at the time it means something different now now that you know how much of a mess the game is but at the time you would have understood that as meaning that it probably runs better than the baseline that you would expect whereas what he mm. what he probably meant as you're saying now as you would read it now is i'm surprised it runs at all but it runs isn't that surprising <laughs> it's just not a good look anyway it's not something you should be proud of mm. um but yeah i've actually seen the game run on a xbox one uh what's xs what, whatever the Whatever the, the like step up yeah, from the, the Xbox, Xbox One, X. One X. Yeah, the one that I've got. The one that I've got. Yeah, 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 the Project Scorpio, that one. Um, I've seen it run on there, and it actually, it runs okay for the most. It yeah, it, it has hiccups, but um, it no, runs okay on, on there. It's fine on the on the mid gen consoles. It's the mm. base consoles that it doesn't run well on, and um, the 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 other the other problem that people had with all this is that. They didn't give any review code out to reviewers for the, the consoles, did they? It was only for PC. Um, they obviously knew that it didn't run well on consoles. <laughs> so that's that's quite unusual that and that 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 raised red flags ever since the embargoes lifted and people realized that there was only um review code available for PC. They knew that this was really bad and they did try to hide it from people. They obviously wanted this to be they wanted this to sell. And they didn't. They obviously didn't care too much if people were going to buy it and then couldn't play it properly, or if it crashed constantly on their base PS4. Or God forbid, imagine trying to play this on a base Xbox One. That thing was incredibly underpowered when it came out in 2013. Oof. Um, and then on top of that, the refunds. Um, they've got this refund window for uh, you know, where you can email them and, and get help which conveniently ends on December 21st, which a lot of people are saying um, that's intentional because it means that anyone who's had a copy bought for them and then they're not going to play it until Christmas, they're going to miss that refund period. Um, mm. Which, 
It could it could oh, be yeah. seen both ways. It could be seen like they're uh, they're giving people time off for the holidays, but we don't know that. They don't actually explicitly say that. That's Why giving them more of a bit. week long refund period though. It seems very short. Um, well, it, I do think that's. It does I'd, feel I'd, like I'd it's pulling it. more staff on during the holidays, isn't it? To like pull them back in after the game's done and be like, okay, now we all got to work through this. But I don't it's know. Twenty first, though, you've got a few days um, after that, or even like even even a few days after Christmas when people mm. pick it up for Christmas and play it. I can sort of see where they're coming from there. At the same time, I don't fully agree with that point though because um, that's you can just, just talk to them. Yeah, that's, just, just like their this. service. Yeah, I've I've already said that CD Projekt Reds whole refund service is pointless anyway because all they're going to do is point you in the direction of the vendor i'm sure so mm. um, you know just speak to whoever you bought it from in the first place they'll help you well past the 21st of december so not entirely convinced of that point honestly um but uh yeah i think that's everything but uh yeah i've seen that this apology has seems to have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way from what i've seen you're saying some people um I feel like I, it is the minority, but that's like I, I feel like the internet is the minority that. of people. When you you see it, it's the vocal minority, honestly. It's not no no because this is going out to the internet. It's only the internet seeing this statement, and I have, haven't actually seen a positive thing in response to it. Um, I've heard that there are some out there. I've not actually seen any there myself. Um, mm. I don't know. Like I I'll, I'll say the the one thing on here is like the base version. You know. I don't, I don't know how you'd make a better apology than this, is what I'm trying to say. When it comes to something like this. Like, you could just leave out the PlayStation and Xbox part, maybe just don't say that, and then, you know. Mm. But it feels more transparent to just say that, you know, just own up to it. Which, I well, guess you can't win either way. They, well, they didn't own up to the fact that they they intentionally hit up at the base console versions where they're, that's the thing. Which I don't think they could do, really. Um, yeah. I just, I, 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 honestly though, I think it's good that people are criticising it. I'm, I'm, this game has seen a shift in how people see CDPR, and I've said this before in the podcast, but I think it's important that people stop viewing this company as a small, humble indie developer. I don't think anyone's, like, like you said this earlier, I don't think anyone sees it as a small, humble indie developer, no, Polish do. workers, people or do. just, who's, who is it that's like, this is a small company people, when they're making like the, one of the most funded games ever made? No, people do. People do because it goes back to The Witcher 2 and even to an extent The Witcher 3 because they're relatively small compared to something like EA. The Witcher 3 was um, still massive as well, though. Activision. They make big games, but they're a relatively small company and people see them as a smaller company that cares about you. And that's just not true. I think they're just as bad as... I'd say they're on par with Ubisoft. Um, I would definitely not say they're on par with Ubisoft. No I mean, in terms of how they treat the customers, I'm, I'm not getting into, obviously, not talking about how they treat the workers, which is a different matter than Ubisoft. It's like, really I mean, bad for that. But in terms of how they treat their, their customers, I think they're about on par with Ubisoft, who are bad, but not, not bad. I mean, they also the penny worst. and dime people. Like, Ubisoft throw in a lot of microtransactions and stuff. They force people onto the Uplay service. I think mm. Ubisoft have a lot worse things going on, which is why I'm like... The, th the thing is with CD Projekt Red, they're by no means a small company. I don't know where this idea came from because they run they run GOG. The uh, they've they have Witcher. They yep. made The Witcher Free. They made Cyber I don't know why I anyone would think they're a small indie company. That seems bizarre to me. I think I think part of it is because they're Polish, honestly, and people just view <laughs> view it as Eurojan and always will. It's it's it's, it's okay. that's it's how people see European developers, um, unless it's France. But if you're in like Eastern Europe or Poland. Um, people I, associate with Georgia. I don't think I've ever seen uh, like this before. Like, I've only heard this from you. No, well, you are the perfect example. You think, and, and the way you talk about CD Projekt Red, I th think this it's really obvious. Um, you you see them as always trying to do the best thing by the customer, and they can do so many things that make it obvious that that's the case, and people will continue to. People will just continue to act like like they're on side, and that, I, I mean, I've that's, that's, that's fair. I'll they, call they, them out for what they're doing wrong, wrong, but I think the I think there is some things where I think they're doing some things right, and they're definitely doing some things wrong. But I I would never put them on the same level as Ubisoft because they do a lot differently. Like they have 
they've always been like against DRM. This is something the GOG platform does as well. They um like they're a lot more transparent than other companies as well. I just I don't see it like they don't throw in microtransactions, they don't do a lot of this stuff, so I give them a bit more of the benefit of the doubt because they've built up a goodwill and they have definitely flaunted a bit of it with the latest release of Cyberpunk because it's... And I I half want to say that it's kind of... It, it, it could be a lot of 2020, but it is also they've pushed this out and maybe over-promised way too early. But I don't buy any... I, don't, I wouldn't by any means put them on the same level as Ubisoft. I don't know. Ubisoft to me is just awful. An awful company, but... You've not I also have a game in a long time, um, so I, I you don't think you would fully appreciate that. They're not as bad as they once were, to be fair, which is why I'm saying that. Um, I feel like you're they, giving Ubisoft the benefit of the doubt. No, because the, Listen, you've Ubisoft not played thought, their games in ages. Games uh, Ubisoft are, are Montreal are just as, <laughs> just a small indie company. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, but no, no they definitely know. like. The, uh, the base pl PlayStation 4 and stuff, they've screwed up with that, and I think they have really squandered a bit of goodwill with the release of this early, which I, th I think we both agree. They probably were just forced to throw it out at this point because they delayed it so many times, and 2020 probably didn't help with that because literally, like, every game in 2020 has been pushed back to 2021 at this point. Yeah, um, I think they might as well have just pushed it back. I don't they think should, the game would I wish they would have pushed it back. Finished, honestly. I think, um, I think I, if they would have pushed it back to March, the game would have been... It would have had a pretty I, flawless I, launch, I think. I wouldn't say... I don't, I don't no, think I would, this game would have ever had a flawless launch. I think something about the way it was developed, um, for it to have taken this long in the first place, if it had gotten pushed back... I think more features might have just been added in because that I'm assuming that's what's been happening all along. Um, I think I think the scope changed is what happened when next gen consoles were announced and they were like f like they were through the project and they were like okay well these new new consoles are coming out we want to push for the new consoles and that's when they started to forget about the base consoles and I think that's what happened there. So I think they were pushing the limits with the PC, probably trying to push onto new console, new generation consoles, and they left the base ones behind and kind of forgot about them. That's the it's, impression um, I got. Yeah, I think ultimately it's, it's it's fallen for the the same bizarre paradox that all development hell games fall into, um, where it's been in development for so long. And when it comes out, it somehow doesn't feel finished. Um, and it, it's it's that strange paradox that always happens with any any game like that. Um, that's why I think even if they'd kept pushing it back, I I think it would have always come out rough. I just wasn't expecting it to be this rough. Like this is real rough. Um, even for games I've... which have, games like this in the past. Like um, I've been thinking of of comparable games in the past, like No Man's Sky, um, which was not finished but was at least stable and ran well enough um but... uh the impression i get is cyberpunk has everything that it's supposed to in it it's just very buggy and unstable at the moment which is the opposite of no man's sky it actually yeah it is to be fair they've obviously just kind of put the focus in, in a different yeah part. no but, man's um... sky came out with like here's the foundation of the game all the stuff we processed isn't in it but it works I... And then Cyberpunk is like, here's everything, but it doesn't really run perfectly. Here's everything, but it crashes constantly. Um, I'd, 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 honestly, I, Unless you've got I a really good rig. <laughs> even then, apparently, it'll, it'll sometimes crash. It crashes on consoles. Um, I've, I don't know. I've had anecdotes like that, but I've, I've seen plenty of people running it fine on higher rigs, which I guess is just the nature yeah. of, like, seeing Twitter anecdotes. It's people like... I think that's PC gaming too, isn't it? If yeah. you're lucky enough to have the right set of equipment, it might. it's not even always necessarily to do with strength, is it? It might just be, if you happen to have a rig that's similar enough to the one they test on, you'll be good. Um, I guess, yeah. Um, and then you also get people who just don't download like drivers. <laughs> you also yeah, get those people. Yeah, true. But, uh... Um, uh. Yeah. It's an interesting so, um, discussion, because it's like... Def it's one of the biggest launches in a while. I mean, it, it's the biggest... <laughs> biggest PC game in history right now so yeah it's a really interesting one to talk about and i i think the market for it was like a really interesting discussion as well 
but it's so much to get into on this uh this one podcast yeah and i feel like you're you're, you're already over it <laughs> I, I get the impression you're just over it <laughs> yeah i think i've said everything i wanted to say really um mm. should we move on to we got a few other well we, we didn't we finish talking about or... cd project did we we're not oh, done yet we? is, is there something else oh my god we didn't talk about how they've handled the devs so oh yeah that's right so well with the uh launch not going the way they wanted it they you know the because all for some reason all triple a companies seem to tie bonuses to scores or most of them seem to from what i understand mm. cd project have went out the way to say everyone will get the bonuses regardless of what score it gets because you know clearly you know up management messed up throwing this out early so mm. that's a good thing to see them do which uh, yeah, they definitely much... deserve after making them crunch, which is another thing which yeah. I'll criticize them for. Definitely, yeah. I didn't even want to get into the whole crunch thing because that was a whole other kind of worms. But uh, the crunch is so a we'll, big problem. I'll just bring that up briefly. I... Mm. I didn't even know that this was still a thing. Honestly, I thought after the whole Fallout New Vegas debacle, I, I thought the companies would have stopped doing this. But apparently, they're I think still they've doing just it. yeah. But, uh, it's just kind of something they don't talk the about. LAB. Yeah. yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I guess it's it's, it's good. Um, they shouldn't have had it in the first place. It's so stupid to tie to 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 tie. Like, you're, you're tying your bonus to a completely arbitrary score. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, it should be there anyway. But it's it's good that it's that they they've had their bonus because they bloody deserve it. They really deserve it. Um, because mm. for as much as I'm gonna as as much as I've been criticizing CDPR uh, this week, I'm criticizing the management for the most part. Um, yeah, I think the, we, we both concerned. are. <laughs> yeah, like the devs are heroes in my mind. Um, what they've like, been asked to do this year is. <sighs> yeah, and like for what, for what it's worth, they've put out a pretty exceptional product, that regardless given of the circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like given what they had to work with, they put out. I what I think it'll still be game of the year and probably a genre defining game. Once you know when that comes around, it will. I think it just needs cleaning up, and that's it. Because I looking at the game, this looks like exactly what I wanted, but uh, I just can't play it. Very sad. <laughs> Hopefully, um, actually, then maybe not. I was gonna say maybe a bit of optimization or sort it out, but I think you just no, I just need a new CPU. Yeah, you need a new CPU. I think this thing, this thing's dying. Sad times. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's that's it. We'll move on from CD Projekt Red. I can I can see the life in a uh, tough size just fading. Uh, I just I just don't like them. I'm I'm sorry to say I'm not a fan <laughs> of them. I'm, not, I'm not even a fan of their games. Um, no, I've I don't. Even, you've them, never liked them for some reason. I don't get it. No, I've just never been able to get into their games. I I appreciate the games um, from like an outsider point of view, but I've never I've never like you know when games just don't click for you. I just don't get I don't feel anything from mm. them. But that's just me anyway. But uh, what's what else we got to talk about? Well, uh, we can talk about the man trying to push push the push, push the legislation to uh get a copyrighted material that's being streamed. You know, a felony. Make it a felony. God, I can't make sentences right now. But uh, oh god, it's <laughs> but yeah, this is a big ongoing story because, of course, the DMCA issues have been happening on Twitch, and then all of a sudden this is getting pushed. And mm. as it turns out, the guy that's pushing it is also getting donations from a lot of big publishing companies that you know maybe license music and stuff. So yeah, we can kind of <laughs> we can kind of yeah. see where the influences are in this legislation, which is, you know, fun. Oh, boy. Mm. No creativity allowed. Um, I think it's worth mentioning as well that this follows on from a story uh, about a month back with the, the guy who works for Google Stadia uh, making a similar point. Um, well, that was uh, less... That wasn't legislation, though, was it? That was, like, just some guy on Twitter. Yeah, but he was saying this should be legislation, and it did make so I think it's worth bringing up um, because and now someone actually is trying to do it. It's a little bit scary, actually, but um, yeah, I mean, it would, it would drastically change the internet if it happened. Not just Twitch, honestly. Um, YouTube, YouTube, um, yeah, even things like 
Instagram stories and TikToks, it would just get out, get out of hand. There'd be no internet left, I think, if like memes. What about memes? Um, <laughs> most of them are copyrighted material. Where does this yeah. sort of thing end? Um, anytime copyright gets brought up on the internet, it's a funny balancing act because part of me is like, I get it. I protect your IP, but then, oh, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is transformative and should be should be allowed to stay. But then, what counts as transformative is basically up to. Usually, it's up to the person who owns the copyright, which that's a major problem with copyright law. Well, it comes down to a judge. Hmm. Yeah, but this is America; they can probably pay the judge. Let's be real, or lobby for it. So, uh, and um. It's all happening in America, so you've got to think about that. And mm. even though it shouldn't technically affect us, whatever happens in America, then we'll change the website to the rest of the world. So, yeah, I will say there's been ca- there's been precedent cases that have set um, has set like stuff for YouTube of uh, what yes. is transformative content. So there is stuff in favor of what creators do on YouTube. Not so Twitch. I don't think there's been a precedent case set for anything on Twitch, honestly. Twitch has no. been flying under the radar for a long time and been able to get away with whatever they want. And then they're like, oh, you you want to you push DMCA on us? <laughs> it, did, it did seem to come as a shock to them. Um, when They should have been preparing for this for years. It was going to happen sooner rather well, than later. From what we understand, they were getting DMCA claims for years anyway and just ignoring them. <laughs> So, the, it was when they got a, a massive flood of them, they were like, what? Why would you give us more? It's like, we have to legally look at these? Oh, so much effort. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, an interesting one. Hopefully, uh, none of that happens. None of that goes through. And, you know, honestly, I, I, I'm trying to think what... I think the best thing you can do for the game industry nowadays is just to become a politician or get into law. <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I mean, make a quick book at least. Yeah, I mean, honestly, how else do you influence this stuff at this point? Because it all comes down to, like, the big things that affect it are, like, issues like this. We have, you know, labor laws and stuff. It's, I don't know, crazy stuff. But I can't get into any of that because I, I, what do I know about politics or law? I play video games. That's all we're good for. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but speaking of video games, um, let's talk video. about the game awards. Oh yes, yeah, something we can definitely talk about. <laughs> but, uh, where um, should we start with the game awards? Should we start with the announcements or shall we uh, talk about the actual awards? What do you, what are you feeling first, Tef? Uh, I think we should. Well, I think I, we kind of agreed that we weren't going to talk too much about the awards. We should. I feel like we can go into it very briefly. Yeah, so, okay. Um, so the last was two won every award. That's basically all you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? They only won one, two, three, four, five. Hold on, six, seven. <laughs> uh, any more? Any more? About like eight, seven. They only won seven awards, so that's not too seven. bad. Hmm. So it's not that many. Oh no, wait, they won eight. They won eight. Never mind, I missed one. <laughs> they got game of the year. That's gonna yeah. rub a lot of people the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, it has. I should say. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has. It has. It was oh. just fine. Well, it's like it, I, I don't hate it as much as most people do, um, or most people who hate it, you know, really hate it, um, and. I just think, I just thought it was okay, but I just thought the the first game was okay too. Honestly, out of the list of nominees, um, I've not played all of them. In fact, I've, I, you know, actually, I've only I've only played one other game on the list for game of the year. But it probably would have been my game of the year, Animal Crossing: New Horizons. That probably should have should have been the one to win. I think. I think honestly, I, I feel like it's one of those games that will never win. It's like Doom Eternal. I feel like just the nature mm. of that game, it'll never get a game of the year, which is kind of yeah. sad. Oh, like Hades, yeah, Hades exactly. is, is now not going to get game of the year, which is sad. No, no, no. it's, it's got to be a big budget, big, big, bombastic, yeah, Hollywood style game. And you're right, and that's annoying. Animal Crossing 100% deserved it, I thought, because that game 
saved people's lives this year <laughs> and that's not even an exaggeration like that has really kept people's mental health above both board this year so i didn't get to uh, play it so that's where i am here that's where i'm at. yeah that's my mental health was not saved <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah honestly i don't know what else like there was very little else that could have even got game of the year this year belly and i feel like belly came out this year um, I mean, yeah. Um, we, I, I don't Everyone know, we push the next year. <laughs> yeah, not all of them are even games from this year because some categories allow for games that yeah. have just made waves this year. So, like Among Us won one. No um, Man's Sky won one. Like for mobile game. Yeah, No Man's Sky, but that was best ongoing game. So that's... Yeah, that one makes sense. That, yeah, makes sense. Um, Hades did win best indie game, which I um, Which it deserves. I've not played it. It's not my type of game. I'm not really into roguelikes. But it's super giant. That's all you need to it. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it, it does sound. Like and they are a small it. indie indie company. <laughs> I'm not saying that CDPR are a small indie company. I'm saying that this is the perception <laughs> as a Polish company. People don't view them in the same way that they should. I you I can laugh know, I've, never, like. I've never seen. I've never. I've never heard that perspective the before. It just seems bizarre. Is, you're just a massive simp for CDPR, and you are part of the I'm problem. Criticized, part I'm criticizing them. Cri I'm giving them criticism for the things they deserve criticism for. But I'm not going to go overboard. You've actually not even criticized them for the fact that they released an unfinished game. So Yeah, I did. A big, big simp. We had a whole talk about it, Tef. <laughs> just wanted to close it up again. All right, what else was that? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what Half-Life Alex didn't get forgotten? It got best VR game, at least. It's the only worthwhile VR game, from what I understand. Yeah, it's the only one worth playing, pretty much, so... Mm. <laughs> yeah, I I still think VR is super niche, and I... I think it's got to be a few more generations before it even... People are even just like... Because I don't, I don't know if I'm interested in it. I feel like there's a lot of people that are just like, I just want a controller. I just want to sit down and play a game. I feel like people aren't like hooked on the idea yet so you know you need some i don't know better cheaper better vr before we get to that point where it's like start putting out some killer apps for vr so yeah i mean nothing else could have really taken that but yeah other than that um final fantasy 7 remake got best rpg at least yeah don't think there was think another rpg fair. this year um there was well there was yakuza 7 <laughs> that was a uh, oh yeah Oh, um, it didn't even get an award. Uh, Genshin Impact, Resona 5 Royal, Wasteland 3, and Yakuza 7 were the, um, the nominees. Was Wasteland 3 RPG. this year? I just thought that. I don't think it was, was it? <laughs> uh, I thought that was last year. This year. Um... Oh, August 2020? No way. No what? way, really. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> What is my perception of time nowadays? Hold on, hold on. Huh. Is that right? Actually, now, now that I've seen that, that does sound right to me now. Maybe I'm making a wasteland. Waste, no, wasteland 2 is like six years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm yeah, looking uh, now at uh, um, the. I'm just looking at all the games that. The Last of Us 2 one, and the only one that I think it deserved, honestly, in my opinion, is best audio design. That game did have incredible audio design. Um, it deserves mm. that win. Everything else. So, I yeah. mean, on honestly, I'd, I'd say I could take best performance, but, I mean, it's up to you to decide who you fought in Last of Us 2, because I, I feel like out of all the games, the person, like, with the actors given the best performance, it's gotta be someone in The Last of Us. Whether you think Abby's actor deserved it or another actor, that's up to you. I think I think Lev was the most interesting character in The Last of Us Part Two, and I think we both agreed on that as well. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a it it it, dep it depends on how they decide what performance means in games because um I don't know like the actual acting wasn't very good, but the mocap was very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, the, I, that was very cool. If, if they're considering uh, the effort that's gone into mocap in that performance, then yes. But the, the performance itself from Abby was Abby was really bland <laughs> for as a character. She really. I'm trying to think of character traits that Abby had, and um, I think it was the characters around her that made her interesting. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah. she she was pretty much a blank slate. She had vertigo, 
and she had big arms, and that's really oh, and daddy issues, um, because Joel shot a dad. Plot spoilers. <laughs> that's about, that's all I remember from like Abby. Like there was not much to her. She was really dull. Um, and that's not mm. really the, the actor's fault, but the, I don't really feel like the actor did much to make her more interesting at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, again, I still I think Lev was the best character in that game, but you know I'm I'm fine with her getting best performance because I feel like the the people who I mean what of a game this year had like good performances for actors. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Um, I I agree with you that the last one was probably with the one regardless there, but I'm mm. I don't know, but I don't know about giving it to, to Abby's actress though. I don't know. I don't know. But then, like, yeah, I can't really think of much else. The other nominees were um, Ellie in The Last of Us, uh, Jin from Ghost of Tsushima, Hades from Hades, and Miles Morales. Uh, so that was the competition. Lev, Lev was robbed. That's all I'll say. Lev was robbed. 100%. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, there was just other awards like Best Esports Athlete, Best Esports Coach, Best Content Creator of the Year. I'll be me, SJ. I'm going for it, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> me and Tef are going to get a joint best content creator of the year next year. That's not happening. Goals. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's it for the awards. I think we're I think we're done with that anyway. Not really much else to talk about. It's game awards. It's the game advertisements, as a, it's been dubbed by a lot of people. So Big let's get to the PR. advertisements part. Yes. <laughs> the fun part. <laughs> Uh, so, where should we start? Should we just go down the list? I guess so. Um, I don't even know what half of these games are. There, like, there's a lot of stuff I've never heard of. Maybe, maybe they're new IPs. I'm assuming that they are. Let's go uh, through. Let's find out. So, there's some like small indie games. You know, there's there's a lot of indie games on here. You double all mm. the digital's putting out more stuff. We got Teacher, Teach, Teachy. Te- I forgot how to pronounce that. Teachy, Teachy, and Teachy. I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it looks like an interesting game. There's like a girl that can like turn into pebbles and stuff and fly about. It's a, it's a bizarre looking game, but it looks interesting. Um, We also got a Sea of Solitude coming to Nintendo Switch. I've not played Sea of Solitude, though it does look like a very, very nice game. I don't know if you know much about Sea of Solitude or if you've played I do it. I not. Uh, no, I don't know anything about it. I think I know the name, but yeah it, yeah, it does look cool actually looking at the trailer. But it's made by a small indie company. <laughs> I never said that. You put words in my mouth. That's not how I put you, it. You s- Listen, we can go back and I'll clip you just saying "small indie company." <laughs> okay, pal. Sure. Send that to you out of context. It'll be all good. Um, Focus Home Interactive reveals a shady part of me, which uh, they don't have a trailer for this, but it was. It was just a game that plays with shadows and stuff. So it's one of those games. You know, it's a, like, puzzle... I mean, it's like a puzzle platform sort of thing. You mess with shadows. It's got all that going for it. Uh, then we had Neo Replicant version uh, 0.1.22474487139. Gameplay revealed. That was very good. Uh, that's the full title of the game. But uh, yeah, that's a remake of an, the old Neo Replicant, which was the prequel to the latest one, Neo Automata. I've not played any like either of the Neo games, but I really want to. I feel like it looks like it's right up my alley. But uh, I'll get around to that one Have day. You played any of them? It does look more like your sort of thing, though. Hmm. And then we had something called Century Age of Ashes, which is not a very good name, I'll be honest. Oh, very generic. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like a medieval fantasy, a lot of PvP. It it was like me. I don't know. I wasn't too interested. And then a big one we had a uh, we had Sephiroth announced in Smash. I don't think anyone saw that coming. That is such a good addition, though. Such a good idea. Yeah, I, I, it's. I'm. You know what? I'm surprised we didn't see it coming because Cloud is in there, so it's kind of cool to have his like nemesis in there. 
Yeah, it's just I don't think it was high on anyone's priority list as a thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's cool. You, he he fucking kills Mario. He just impales Mario through the chest. <laughs> it's in great. The, in the trailer. The, the one image of just Mario just impaled there on his sword. <laughs> it's horrific. They're all like enshrouded in shadow. Um, it's all gothic and. I think one weird. one winged angels this playing as well, which is like it is. Mwah. <laughs> That's so good. I uh... But yeah, there's also a new trailer for Perfect Dark, which, I mean, I feel like we've seen Perfect Dark. You know, we've. I feel like we saw something of the new Perfect Dark n- not long ago. I don't remember. What? No, this is a new announcement, Paul. I'm sure I saw like a. Um... Maybe it was a rumor, but I, I had something about a new Perfect Dark. But this I is mean, like big for a lot of people. People are always saying there's a new one. Um, yeah. People always wanted a new one. It might be one of those. It might have been one of those, yeah. but I feel like I had something months back. I, I could be wrong. I, we would, probably would have covered it on the podcast. Too. So you, if you don't remember it, then I don't know what I'm thinking of. But yeah, this is big for a lot of people who are big fans of Perfect Dark, which I'll be honest, I'm not super invested in Perfect Dark, but I might give it a look. I've never played it. Um, although... Uh, I, it's it's on Game Pass as part of Rare Replay, so I actually might give it a go because um, mm. it it does have a big cult following. Perfect. Dark. It, it is very yeah. it is a very uh, cult game, isn't it? Mm. Although you know how much of that is down to the fact that it's an early console FPS and therefore many people's first FPS ever. Um, that's probably mm. it's probably coloring people's view of it a little bit, but we'll we'll have to see. Yeah. Um... I don't know, it's interesting. We'll, we'll see what actually happens. Like, I I don't know. From what I remember from Perfect Dark, it wasn't super interesting to me. Maybe that was just I don't. Maybe I just wasn't interested at the time. So I might give this one a look. We'll see what it's like. Um, then we had a reveal for Back for Blood, which is an interesting one because it's by Turtle Rock, which are the same people that made Left for Dead, and this is a first-person zombie shooter with co-op, so it feels like the spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. That's the impression that a lot of people were getting. And I think there's been talks about them wanting to make a spiritual successor for a while, so... Mm. It seems pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. I, I it's feel not like... a bad thing. It's been a long time since we've had Left 4 Dead. Yeah, I'm sure we... I'm sure there's been rumors about this game as well a few times in the past. Because this they, game's they've... been, this is not an announcement. So I think we we already knew about this game. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just double checking. I think this is the first time I've seen it in Ocean. Oh. Yeah, I I have heard about this game before. Yeah, because I'm I don't remember if it was called Back for Blood back then. I think it might have been called something else. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I do remember there being a big four in it. Cause I do remember the there being a four. Yeah. Reference. Left for Dead, but I mean, we'll see. But yeah, you know, it's Left for Dead. Um, Left for Dead's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's good fun occasionally. Um, I think I'll be picking that up though. No, probably not. <laughs> and then we had Hood Outlaws and Legends, which is you know, it's a Robin Hood kind of game. That's it's like a medieval <sighs> multiplayer game. How does the multiplayer work? Uh, it's just I don't. I honestly don't know exactly how the game <laughs> plays. This is one of those games oh, that kind of. It's just like a PvP, so that's a that's the impression I got. Yeah, just kind of. Yeah, just medieval deathmatch sort of thing. A little bit of a side thrown in there, I guess. Yeah, but it's got like a you know a Robin Hood outlaws. Spin to it. Yeah, I don't really see that in the actual gameplay, though. It just looks like generic dark fantasy. Mm. And then we got the Scavengers closed beta is open, which is a free-to-play action shooter. Oh, boy. Yay. Because we don't have enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm not super interested, but hey, if that's your thing... Feel free to go for it. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. I'm skipping over a few things because there's a few things in here. There is a lot in here. 
with some more Warhammer 40k dark tide gameplay so we're seeing some of some of that that's uh essentially another left for dead game but set in the warhammer world so if you if you want more left for dead you know you've got plenty on the way um I just this was close. <laughs> yeah uh vermintide before that was like another one of those left for dead type oh, games right yeah yeah so they've liked doing those games and then we had open roads which Who's this by again? This one looked super interesting. Uh, yeah, I Fulbright uh, is the publisher, which rings a bell, but uh, the developer, I don't know. Anapana Interactive. Fulbright I'm, rings a bell. I'm I sure I've heard... published. Yeah, I had this somewhere else as well. Hold on. I think they published Gone Home. Uh, yes, they did. Uh, they developed Gone Home. Mm. Um, Stray. So... They're also uh, oh, it's Anna, Anna Panna are also publishing Stray, so I knew the name rang a bell. Stray and some other stuff, but yeah, that one uh, popped up, which it looks interesting. It's got like a neat art style to it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I got it the wrong way around. So Anna Panna is the publisher, and yeah, yeah, Fulbright's the developer. So the same guys you made Gone Home. It does seem really cool. Yeah. Um. There's like uh. It's it's got a sort of almost hand drawn nineties Disney style um to the cut scenes. I don't know how much so like like translates over. into the game, really. No certain parts of it looks like it does, like the character art, but the actual like the animation environment standard three it's weird, I don't know. it's hard to tell mm. from the trailer exactly how it's gonna play out, but um Like it gives me some like, you know, um comic like you know small indie company comic book uh i'm sitting with a coffee reading comic type comic book vibe i don't know why i just imagine <laughs> that's the art style in my mind it just involves coffee for some reason i don't know why that's where my I mind is going the color palette it's very coffee yeah. colored the color palette <laughs> but yeah it's uh interesting we'll see what happens with that one and then we got the Dragon Age 4 new look, which we knew was coming. We did we did hair rumors yeah, about this yeah. beforehand. So some fan favorite characters back. Oh boy. <laughs> it's just a cinematic trailer, so we don't really see a lot. God knows whether that'll be good or not. I feel like it could, could go either way. Yeah, it really could. A bunch of uh people dropped off from the Dragon Age and the Mass Effect team as well, so we don't really know. We'll see. Yes, of course. You know, uh, and then there was Endless Dungeon, which is a small indie company, Roguelite. Um, <laughs> we then had Crimson Desert f- gameplay revealed as well, which looked interesting. It looked kind of generic, though, as well. I thought this was Tomb Raider as I scrolled past. <laughs> no. <laughs> But I think yeah. it's just the, the character in a thumbnail. But yeah, I don't know. It looks yeah. it looks like very generic um, showcase it looks game. Like the, it looks like Horizon to me. <laughs> I mean, it's, I guess you could it's clearly quite heavily inspired by it. But yeah, it's an open world action other... adventure, so it's like yeah. it's just one of those games. Other than that, you know. Um, I actually don't know. No, it doesn't say. Um, come on, come on, IGN, get your articles together. I I think it's by Pearl Abyss. Is are they the same people? No who... idea who they are. That oh, is them. It is them who are doing it, but I've got no idea who they are. They're the same people that make Black Desert, aren't they? Are Which they? is yeah. So the, the, I was going to say it's got a very similar style to Black Desert with the way it looks. All right, huh. but it's not an MMO. I don't think. No, I, I don't think it is either. That's uh, odd. So yeah, but it's, it's, it's so is it part of the same universe? It's got the same branding then with the name. <laughs> Weird. Uh, it could potentially have some connection to it. I don't exactly know. I'm not massive into Black Desert. Like I played a bit of it, but I never got too deep in. I might go back to Black Desert and, you know, give it another go, but it's an interesting one to see. 
Um, Overcook got a new chef. <laughs> um, Yay. And then an, an indie game called Season was announced. Which, I mean, it looked nice. I don't know what it's about. You ride on a bike in it and walk around. <laughs> and then go to different locations and... Looks I don't know. kind of indie game, honestly, not gonna lie. Looks right up my alley. You just walk mm. around, take pictures. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. And I don't know, the visuals are really nice. Yeah, so. kind of Studio GB inspired, almost. Very cool. <laughs> um, then... Uh, Octo. Should we talk about Octo? Ugh. Oh, Vin this Diesel. Is, it's horrifying. I brought this up on an arcade stream that I was doing, but I just I got a gif of Vin Diesel's face up on in this, and it just it's horrifying. It's like it's not Scorpion King levels of horrifying, but like no, I don't want Vin Diesel's mm. face in my arc. I don't even arc's not even finished as a game. Like that's a broken mess of a game still, and it's got like five expansions, and then they brought out. Well, their sister company brought out a game called Atlas, which was completely broken, and I don't know if that ever got fixed either. It also copy and pasted code directly from Ark, and a bunch Amazing. of people bought that. And um, frankly, they're one of the worst small small indie companies out there. <laughs> I feel like if you're um, yeah, if you're still buying these games, not gonna lie, you just kind of getting mugged off at this point, but you should know better, really. I don't know who is who would still, I don't know who would buy this after mm. being screwed over by Ark, but then again, some people do enjoy Ark despite its problems, so maybe, maybe there's a place for it. Uh, but I mean, it's enjoyable with friends, but if you don't have friends like me, you just uh, you're bitter, you hate the game, <laughs> and Vin Diesel's in it, yeah. Vin Diesel, Good there's also an animated series. Up. There's an animated series for it as well. I don't know why they're doing an animated series for Ark, which is bizarre. Who cares? I don't Does know. Does Ark even have a story? I don't think it did, to be honest. I've never played it, though, to be fair. Um, Just never not really. Something that was story heavy. You've got, like, a gem thing in your hand, and then you go to bosses that are, like, and get future tech. I don't... I don't know why anyone won. No, no one asked for an Ark animated series. Maybe it's good... I don't know. Vin Diesel, maybe Vin Diesel is like shows up like, hey, I'm, I'm Vin Diesel. I don't know. Listen, that's my, I don't, I'm not going to do a Vin Diesel impression. <laughs> I don't think he's capable of that. He just kind of goes, <laughs> and then he punches a T Rex. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, But yeah, that's Octo. And then uh, Fall Guys Season 3 trailer got dropped. <laughs> Maybe it'll actually have content this time because season two didn't have any. I didn't maps, even play didn't season, even season two. Season. <laughs> I haven't. I just I, I was going to, and then I heard that there's only four maps, and they don't even come into the rotation that often. So, uh, I need to. I don't know. I need to play Fall Guys again at some point. Just you know, give it another try. Hmm. We'll see. But yeah, and then what else did we have? I feel like I'm not even halfway through the list. No, there's so much stuff. There's so much got dropped. There was Outriders get got another trailer. Uh, An Evil Dead game was announced, which is interesting. I don't know. Are you a big fan of Evil Dead? No. No. <laughs> I've really got to say on that. To be honest, I'll be honest. I've not watched Evil Dead. I've <laughs> I was like, I I know of it. I've seen bits. I'm good. You know, horror's yeah, not really my much, thing. That's kind of where I stand on it, honestly, and horror is my thing. I've yeah. never really been particularly interested in Evil Dead, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not uh, super into horror things, so they don't, they don't do anything for me. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen me play a horror game, but I just sit there and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... And then we got Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection announced for the Nintendo Switch. Which, uh... Yeah, that's kind of cool. I thought this was a remake at first, but it's not. It's it's actually its own game, I believe. Um, mm. So it must have slightly different level designs. Um, 
That's cool. I mean, I, I said this uh, to you when it was first announced, I know, um, but Ghost, Ghost and Goblins, it makes sense. Uh, people are really into difficult games at the minute, so to bring that back just seems like a bit of a masterstroke. Um, Did we talk about the last <laughs> podcast? No, no, I think... It, it, no, because it wasn't announced in the last podcast. It was. I feel, Australia. yeah, I feel like, I f- yeah, but I feel like we didn't speak about it because of this. I feel like we spoke about it before then. I feel like you predicted it. Maybe I'm just wrong. No, you're wrong. I, I just, I, I don't remember. Your message when, when it was first announced, just saying, um, as, as cliched as it sounds, um, this game kind of was the Dark Souls of its era. It was known for its difficulty. So to bring it back now makes sense because people are really into difficult games at the minute. So I think, oh, maybe we did talk if about it. Like if they market it properly, um, I think I'll do quite well. I'm gonna do okay. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna make waves. Honestly, <laughs> like it's. T- yeah. Well, the Zoomers don't care about be. ghosts, ghosts and goblins. They're like, what's yeah. that? That sounds dumb. I'll <laughs> <laughs> well, do all right for itself. You know, for yeah. the type of game it is. Yeah, and then we got a, a look at gameplay for Returnal, which you might remember from the PlayStation conference that we watched together. Um, but, oh, I didn't realize it was that game. Yeah. Yeah. It, I it looked. Still don't fully understand what's happening in it. <laughs> I mean, it just looks like generic third person shooter. Yeah. With a bit of speed to it. It looks like it's just like, you know, it's got like a mix of third person shooter and Halo. I don't know. And some spooky stuff's going on. Yeah, kind of sci fi horror style. Mm. Definitely. That's then, based on on every drug, basically, is the fact you can get. Yeah, Dead Space. If like, you know, it's like they put Dead Space in a petri dish and Kojima spat in it, and then he just left it out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a little. I don't bit know why that's the analogy. I don't know why I, that's I where my re- brain went. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you get what I mean. I do somehow. I do. Um, then we got, it takes two gameplay, we got Super Meat Boy Forever release date, Odd, coming out. Oddworld Soul Storms coming spring 2021, oh boy, not seen that sure, enough I'm yet. Sure. This is like the fourth <laughs> gameplay reveal trailer, I swear, they just keep dropping trailers for this game, but they never release it. <laughs> it's just so weird. They really dragged out the hype train for it. Yeah, and then... Elder Scrolls Online is getting an expansion. Oh boy. Um, Yay. Because. Monster Hunter Rise. An upcoming demo announced. So we got to see. Master Chief comes to Fortnite. Don't forget. <laughs> Among Us gets really a new important. map. Yay. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> when it gets it. Next year. Uh, some weeb game called Scarlet Nexus. <laughs> We're trying to go through these very quickly. Now. I don't know if everyone's realized. But uh. Just Cause is coming to mobile. I don't know why anyone played Just Cause on mobile. We got a look at Rune King, a League of Legends story. Which um, is a ten based RPG set in the League world, which is something we had about. Which is interesting. It's got all the League of Legends characters and looks like you can party up with them. And looks like it's got a mix of like Diablo and JRPG stuff going on. That's the impression I got. Not earlier. That, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm, yeah, I think um, we'll start seeing them expand on the league universe a lot, a lot more. That seems to be what they want to do. Mm. It's good. Mm. Don't and then it's just a mobile genre. I feel like that's the type of genre that will one day just die, and you don't want to be left without without something else to latch onto. Anyway, yeah. What else have we got? Mass well, Effect. We, Mass, Mass Effect. Effect. We neither of us care about Mass Effect, do we? No, we don't. No, not more. Than it's, it's, sorry, got, it's, like got the, it's got the it's got the blue lady in it from from the other games. She's in it. Yeah, she's blue. Yeah, she's back. Maybe she's from other games. Maybe she's a different blue person. I don't know. Is that racist? Maybe. <laughs> don't clip that. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's the same one. Everyone, everyone's saying it looks like the, the blue, the blue woman from the other games. So it wasn't me who said it. The article said it. Okay, but that's it. That's it. I think we're actually through them all now. Yay! Yeah, it's all big list and not all that's all that interesting, really. Uh, but they announced a lot, man. They did a lot. A lot popped up. I mean, there's some interesting stuff in there, like you know, 
most of the indie games, honestly. The indie games are like, ooh, you know what? I might check some of these out. And then Perfect Dark was a big one, I guess. Neo Replicant. Uh, yeah, I mean... Apart from Neo, Neo and Perfect Dark, I guess there was the Mass Effect and the, uh... The... I almost said Fable 4 one. The Dragon Age Origin 4. Origin... Dragon Age 4. Origin 4. I'm, I'm, I'm too tired. <laughs> it's late. But, um... Yeah, that's about it. There was a there was a lot going on at the Game Awards this year, and I don't know. It was you know as usual. It was just the the actual awards were kind of dull, <laughs> but yeah, we got to see some interesting announcements. So, but knows? we'll see what we'll, should we place bets on the Game of the Year next year. What do, what do you think is going to be tough? I think I think it will be Cyberpunk, and I don't think okay. it'll be deserved. It will be Cyberpunk. That's how it works, isn't it? Um, the Last of Us didn't deserve it, and yet here we are. That's Not a, wasn't. I mean, well, actually, parts of it definitely did. It was like a masterpiece. Yeah, um, what you say though? Oh, 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 oh! You're using the word masterpiece oh, there. Oh, hold on, the internet's oh, coming for you. <laughs> oh well, you can fight me. It was. I can hear the pitchforks being the clanked. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to argue that it didn't have, like, really good sound design and, like, animation and things like that. Yeah. So I it, guess you could win awards for that part, but the rest of it was just kind of okay. So. I mean, yeah, it definitely did a lot of, like, really good stuff. It did stuff that was, like, you know, beyond what most developers do. But at the same time, they also crunched really hard for that game. Like, <laughs> extremely hard to put in, like, little details, like putting parts on guns and like the craft and gun parts and stuff. Like I feel like those were yeah, details that didn't need to be in there. But uh you can just imagine the guy that yeah. had to sit there for like three weeks in the dark <laughs> working on just the animations for that. He was like, Ooh. It's, yeah, it's um if they go a little bit overboard. That's kind of what tri- what these AAA games do now though. They try to cram in too much detail for their own good, don't they? Mm. Um well, and, we're, and we're coming up on quadruple A. Um, quadruple A games now. That's what they want to call them. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's just not happening. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's it. That's it. That's what's done for the night. So, Teff, tell the people where they could find you on the internet. Uh, I am... Um... On Twitter as Teffers. I'm trying to type it out and I'm I'm too tired to even type anymore. Um there we go. Hey. Um I'm Teffers on Twitter. Um I think I post on there occasionally, I just ramble about games like I do here. So go check me out on there if you like this kind of rambling. Um and I also occasionally like just occasionally write medium articles. I've really really not been doing that too often lately because I'm just sleeping all the time. Mm, sleep. <laughs> yeah, when I do, but when I was, it's uh, always the pin tweet, and you can see the latest one on there if you go and check out the Twitter. So uh, yeah, that's me. Twitter's the main place to find me. What about you, my man? Well, uh, if you don't know me already, which you probably do, I'm Zanrise on Twitch, Zanrise on YouTube, Zan Games on Twitter, the real Zanrise on Instagram, and yeah, that that is it. You can just check out all the socials right now if you're over on Twitch. If you're watching the, the VOD, they'll all be below in the description. And if you want to, you know, see the VODs of the podcast, you can check them out over at youtube.com slash this podcast is an alpha. Just look up this podcast is an alpha. You'll be able to find the channel. And uh, we have all the VODs over there if you want to just watch them on demand. Or, if you want the audio experience, you can check us out over at Spotify or iTunes and pick up the podcast there, so you can listen to it on the go. But yeah, that is it. That is us done for the night. We both want to sleep. We promise oh, yes. next next week will be a much more coherent podcast. We we can't guarantee it, but we, we'll promise it. I'm not going to say we'll keep our promise, but we'll, tr- <laughs> we'll try. We'll try our best. So yeah. We'll be back on Thursday doing some more Metal Gear. We'll do finish Metal Gear, myself and Teff, if you want to join us for that. And if you want to catch the podcast, we'll see you all again next week with even more fun gaming news. It'll be a good old time, so thanks for hanging out, discussing along with us, and we'll see you then. Bonsoir. Bonsoir.